Okay. Yeah. Who knew? The webinar is yeah. starting practice. I'm the first vice chair of the community board. I am going to be facilitating the public session and the elected session. Um, I had a little bit of a computer failure right before the meeting. So um, Linda and Clint have stepped in to run the back side of the meeting. Again, if everybody can mute themselves, if you are not talking. Richard, your mic is Richard, still live. Please mute yourself. Thank you. Um, so again, um, we're having some technical challenges tonight because my computer crashed. Um, but we will make do as best we can. We're gonna get started with public session. As a reminder, um, for a public session, you need to fill out a form and send it to the office by noon on Monday in order to be included in public session. We have about 12 people tonight who have done so. Um, and as a reminder, you will get two minutes during your um, segment and Linda will be putting the timer up for those two minutes as well, so that you have some warning. Um, the first three people, so that you can um, cue yourselves up, uh, we're gonna start with Roderick Williams, then we're gonna go to Donald Moy, and then Mark Benoit. So Roderick, you can unmute yourself, please. Roderick, are you there? Roderick? All right, we're gonna go. Okay, to I'm, here, I'm here, I'm here. All right. <laughs> can you start your comments, please? Uh, so what, um, can, uh, what do I push? You don't push anything. You, you have two minutes to talk about whatever okay, you want. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, with the saturation and proliferation of bars and restaurants in this community, even before the reopening, with only outside spaces on June eighth, there has always been a systemic noise problem in this community coming from these establishments. Establishment. But the movements of these businesses into new spaces poses new hard questions about who gets to occupy these outside spaces that are increasing the demand. So, um, for example, there are two bars below my apartment window, 12th Street L House, 192nd 2nd Avenue. It was not able to open back up because there was only outdoor spaces outdoor public spaces for only two or three tables. It's still closed. The bar next to it, Jukes Bar, 196 Sec 2nd Avenue, has sidewalk public spaces for seven or eight tables along with open down, with, with an open down patio, downstairs patio. We have a painful contestation around public space in the city. Who can be in it? doing what on what terms. Our problem with difficult behavior in the public realm is going to be exacerbated if we try to move these businesses outside in those spaces indefinitely without regulations, consideration, or enforcement. One can imagine conflicts with people who are outside drinking alcohol on our streets more than usual. It remains to see whether this city, this community can avoid the worst case scenario in which streets become quasi privatized, preserved for paying customers graded new freedoms. Now, everyone was drunk inside. Now, everyone is drunk outside. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. All right. Our next speaker, Donald Moy. Donald? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, yes. OK, thank you very much. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, my name is Donald Moy, and uh, uh, I attend Grace Faith Church and City Grace Church. These are two small churches in the Lower East Side. We're in the Chinatown community. Uh, we have uh, 
a mission we call the, um, well, we call it Holy Connection. It's, um, we started a, a free computer lab in our church that we're reaching out to the shelter population and the homeless population. We find that uh, uh, there's a, uh, a lack of ability of uh, many of the sheltered population to gain access to internet access that they need for such things as updating resumes, job search, applying for government to aid, or just accessing email, for instance, to engage in uh, uh, needed communications with family members and, uh, uh, and, and community services. Uh, so, so we've uh, we're two small churches, so we just we have volunteers in our church to um, provide mostly by appointment to the shelter population to use our uh, laptop computers uh, so that they can gain internet access. And we would like to encourage uh, the business community and other uh, houses of worship to engage in similar services uh, because there is such a strong need. Uh, for the uh, financially needed to gain access to, inter to to gain internet access at this time, uh, we heard uh, I heard with uh, enthusiasm the testimony of the uh, New York City Comptroller uh, last week, Mr. Uh, uh, Luke Wolf, uh, who said the school children need access. He's and he's encouraged the business community and and private organizations to reach out and help school children, needy school children, to gain access. Uh, to, 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 to gain internet access. So we, we would encourage uh, the business community and other houses of worship to find a way to also provide access to needy school children because there is such a dire public need at this time. And, uh, and I'll provide my information on the, on the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moy. All right, Mark Benoit. Here, good evening. My name is Mark Benoit representing the Grand Street Guild. We want to thank the Land Use Zoning Public and Private Housing Committee for their thoughtful and thorough consideration of the Guild's application to the amend the site plan of the Grand Street Guild block to allow for the introduction of two new 100 affordable housing projects and upgraded open space. It is a project that we care deeply about, one that will add another 480 units of affordable housing to the block, and one that has been made better through the process, including through our ongoing dialogue with the Residents Association. We wanted to thank the committee members and the board and want them to know that we have reached out to the Resident Association president to find a time to continue the discussions to confirm the project measures set forth in the letter sent to Council Member Chin. And we will look forward to this ongoing dialogue. Again, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Benoit. All right, um, before we move on, our next three speakers are all gonna be from the Lower East Side Preservation Initiative, Richard Moses, Deborah Y, and Laura Sewell. Um, they're gonna actually, I think, gonna be uh, Linda sharing those slides that I had sent you. Um, before we get to them, I just wanted to backtrack a little bit and mention that um, for next month's meeting, we are changing uh, the way that we're gonna have people sign up for public speaking. Um, thanks to Ed Chan in our office, who did a lot of legwork to uh, digitize the public speaking form. Uh, the form that's currently up there had some, some challenges uh, we understand this month. So Ed has made it um, actually a fillable form directly on our website um, and not a downloadable PDF anymore. So we'll be launching that sometime between this meeting and our next full board meeting. And that's how you'll be signing up to uh, speak for next month's meeting. So I just wanted to publicly thank Ed for that hard work uh, and that great work on getting that form online. Uh, so Richard Moses, you're up. Uh, Richard, which uh, one of these two things do you want up there? The PDF uh, so or the PowerPoint? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a PowerPoint. Um, it's, it's actually a PDF uh, PowerPoint that should say uh, East River Park. Oh, wait a minute. Um, this is let me get Our the right house and tennis center comfort station on the top. Yes, okay. exactly. Got it. Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm Richard Moses, uh, president of the Lower East Side Preservation Initiative, also known as Lesby. We at Lesby are proposing to restore and renovate the East River Parks track house and tennis center comfort station, which you can see on the slides here, rather than demolish the buildings as currently planned under the East Side Coastal Resiliency Project. 
Recently, the New York State Historic Preservation Office determined that these buildings are eligible for the state and national registers of historic places for both their unique architectural distinction and historic importance. Saving the track house and tennis center comfort station should not be difficult. Moving and relocating large structures such as these is not unusual. They can be easily enlarged to meet the park's current needs. And in light of global warming and its effect on the Lower East Side, keeping existing buildings and restoring them is almost always a much greener solution than demolishing them and rebuilding new. Tonight, we're asking for full board approval of a resolution in support of saving these buildings as passed by the Parks Committee last week. And I wanna thank the committee uh, for this. My fellow Lespy board member, Deborah Y, will now describe for you the unique qualities of these buildings and our proposal for restoration and renovation, which includes brand new bathrooms and other interior facilities that meet all park department standards and future needs and programming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. That was under your two minutes. So Deborah, you've got your two minutes now. Now, do you want the PowerPoint, Deborah? Yes, she does. Okay. I'm confusing about you guys and what you need. <laughs> Wait. We'll get there. Don't worry. I have to unmute, right? Wait. Yes. Unmute. If you wish to be heard. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure and, you do. There you go. Okay. And you'll advance the slides then, right? I'll be happy to. Okay. Thank you. I'm Deborah Y, a board member of Lesby. Here is a closer look at the track house on the left and the tennis center comfort station on the right. Next. These buildings have numerous unique design elements. I did a survey of 37 parks and playgrounds in CB3 and found no other building with ornamentation relating directly to the neighborhood in which a park is located. Here you'll find fish, water, and vegetation a design motif based on a shipping tool, and also stars that may refer to nighttime navigation. Next. Here is the current tennis center comfort station at the top. In the middle is the new proposal, which is bigger. This is a standardized contemporary design planned for parks all over New York City. It is definitely not unique to East River Park. At the bottom is our proposed restoration and enlargement extended at each end. This provides a focus on the historic structure, but with enough room for all new bathrooms, concession stands, and storage. Next. Here is the track house at the top. In the middle is the proposed contemporary design, again, a standardized building. The bottom shows our idea for a restored track house with extensions. The interior would be completely new to fit all park department requirements. Next. Here are renderings of our proposed restorations, both buildings newly cleaned and with additions at either end. When East River Park opened in 1939, there were five such distinctive buildings, but three were demolished over time. We do not want to lose these last two. Thank you. Thank you. You guys must have rehearsed. You were under two minutes also. <laughs> last, is, last is Laura. <laughs> Laura, you need to unmute yourself. I'm trying, thank you, we got it. I'm Laura Sewell speaking today as a member of Lesby's board. I'm also the director of the East Village Community Coalition, one of several preservation organizations that signed on to the effort to preserve and renovate the track and tennis houses in East River Park. I just like to share some background for members who might have questions about the timeline with these buildings. Uh, during the environmental review process, the SHPO only considered the track and tennis houses as part of the overall park, not on the merits of the individual buildings. And the park itself was not considered eligible because it had undergone so much alteration over the years. But the track and tennis houses remained very much intact, just like the fireboat house, which was given certain protections. The community only learned that the track and tennis houses would be demolished when the new preferred alternative was announced about two years ago. Lesby was surprised to find they'd been omitted from the environmental impact statement and has spoken publicly about this ever since. 
The city ESCR team was aware that Lesby asked the SHPO to reconsider these buildings last December, with Lesby providing research and endorsements and support. The SHPO issued a determination of eligibility in June and has been in contact with the city ever since. So Lesby's proposal to preserve and renovate these buildings was heard at Parks this month, where we were thrilled to win the committee's support. We've requested the opportunity to present the proposal to the city team. We've all heard how complex the Esker project is, moving con ed lines, installing reservoirs and gates, many moving parts. If the city can do all this, they can certainly make accommodations for these buildings. Lesby would like to thank Trevor Holland and the committee for being open to hearing our proposal and the Landmarks Committee for their support. Having earned the committee's support, we've now started to share the news of this effort with the public, particularly those in NYCHA housing nearest these buildings. If you haven't heard from us yet, you will soon. And of course, feel free to reach out with any questions or concerns you may have. For those interested in learning even more, Lesby will give an in-depth presentation at our November 10 general meeting. That's Lesby, L-E-S-P-I dash NYC dot O-R-G for the mailing list. Thanks all very much. Thank you, Laura. All right, moving on to our next round of speakers. We're gonna have Harry Bubbins, followed by Christine Dats Romero. And then finally, I'll be taking off my board member hat and giving a public announcement as well. Harry? Thanks, can you hear me? Yes. Great, uh, thanks a lot. I'm Harry Bubbins. I'm the East Village Director for Village Preservation. Thanks for the opportunity to speak at the public session tonight. Uh, I want to share an update regarding Charisel Bohio Community Center, the old PS64, the landmark former school designed by architect CBJ Snyder between East 9th and East 10th Street off of Avenue B, uh, for those that might not be familiar with it, and I'm sure that's very few, if any. Uh, and the ongoing saga of what's been considered demolition by neglect. Uh, uh, there's been a recent update. Uh, the city inspected the building the Department of Buildings and the Fire Department went after there were numerous complaints from people accessing the roof and, and a pit that opened on the sidewalk. Um, this resulted in the city issuing uh, what's called an immediate emergency declaration, and they requested that HPD seal the building. Um, the owner was notified of this emergency declaration, and the city indicated that instead of sealing it uh, instead of a city agency sealing it, they would allow the owner to perform the emergency work. Uh, we are gonna continue to monitor and we call for the action to continue to make it safe, uh, repair the building. And um, I just lost my notes when uh, someone took over and, uh, and ultimately return the building to community use as the mayor had uh, proposed. And we want to acknowledge and thank all the many people that made complaints and the neighbors and elected officials and other organizations that are involved in this matter. Um, the other thing real quick that came more clear last night from the, uh, you might have heard about the Soho NoHo rezoning proposal. Uh, we're very concerned about that and Community Board 3, uh, it's definitely going to impact Community Board 3 as it's right on the border. Uh, if not in it, the final uh, delineation of the zoning proposal hasn't been totally announced yet. Uh, we've urged the city to require affordable housing in new development without these massive up zonings um, as other cities do, but so far they're resisting that. And uh, we also don't want the proposal to make allowances for more big box chain stores, which they also seem to want to do, unfortunately. So uh, stay tuned on the Soho NoHo rezoning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you, Harry. Christine? Good evening, my name is Christina Dutz Romero and I'm talking on behalf of the Lower East Side Ecology Center and I would like to thank the uh, Parks Committee who um, in the meeting in October um, um, worked on a resolution in support of basically guaranteeing that the Ecology Center has a future here in East River Park. Um, we are, we are asking for a written guarantee from the parks department that all programs of the Ecology Center return to East River Park, uh, environmental education, stewardship and composting once ESCAR is complete. And also that we find a sensible solution to guarantee uninterrupted um, 
a continuation of our programs, especially our composting program. Um, the relocation of our compost yard has hit a snag because the uh, temporary site that was identified under the Triborough Bridge in East Harlem um, does not seem to be uh, moving forward. Uh, and so we really don't have a place to move the compost yard two, which is very disconcerting and uh, Parks Department is really not engaging in any sort of conversations with us about the future of this program. And I also wanted to just sh briefly share with the uh, community board that today I received a email from uh, Sam Biederman, um, who basically um, pointed out that our license agreement with parks is uh, expiring on November 4th and that uh, we need to move out of the firewood house uh, the latest November 5th into Seward Park Park House. And I find that just really incredibly, um, I don't even know, I don't even have words for it to give an organization one week to move uh, its headquarters uh, and um, don't really see the urgency for that since we know that ESCOR is not starting until 2021 and we intend to stay here until construction commences in East River Park. Uh, I have sent a reply to the Parks Department and asked them again to work with us on uh, making sure composting will continue in this neighborhood. And uh, again, we want assurances from the Parks Department that uh, we will have a future here in the park. And I would like to thank the community board for their support. Thank you, Christine. Um, finally, I'm taking off my hat as the first vice chair and putting on my hat as the chair of Friends, Year, Friends of Corlears Hook Park. Feel free to time me, Linda. Because uh, I'm speaking from the public now. Um, so uh, this Saturday, uh, Halloween, um, Friends of Corlears Park is hosting a um, outdoor, safe, hopefully safe, um, COVID-friendly uh, trick-or-treating event for the kids in the neighborhood between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. We have about um, 15 or so local families and community groups who are going to be spread out throughout the park. Um, with treats to give out to the kids. Um, and we will uh, be welcoming uh, kids uh, for those two hours. Uh, you can go to our website, friendsofcorelears.org to find out all the information. Um, we split up people um, in half an, half an hour shifts based on uh, their last names. Uh, so check that out if you wanna come by. There's a pre-registration on the website uh, because we need to collect everyone's information just in case we need to do contract tracing afterwards. But we will have all um, COVID protocols in place. We'll be taking people's temperatures. We'll have face masks available and rubber gloves and the whole nine yards. Um, and then the following week, uh, Pumpkin Smash, which we usually pr um, partner with um, the Lower East Side Ecology Center on, um, unfortunately this year we couldn't due to COVID, but uh, Pumpkin Smash is occurring at the Lower East Side Ecology Center uh, compost yard. Um, so check out Lower East Side Ecology's website for information on that. And that is all I have. Um, so that now concludes our public session. So we are going to move into the elected session. Um, just a reminder during the elected reports, um, we're gonna ask the representatives to keep it to two to three minutes max. Uh, we're gonna keep the timer up for that. And we um, also uh, only take questions to the elected uh, representatives from community board members. Um, so if you're a member of the public and have a question, you might be able to get it answered in the chat from the, from the uh, representative, but typically verbal questions are only allowed from community board members. Um, I can only see nine people on my iPad since my computer crashed. And with the screen share, I can only see one. Um, so uh, um, the only elected that I saw join us is Gail. Um, Gail, you typically like to go after all the others. Do you want to keep that or would you like to go first? I see Deborah Glick here. Okay. And I thought I saw Harvey. Yeah, I'm here too. Sorry, you guys might have joined after I look. I apologize. So why don't we start with you, Harvey? Go ahead. And Linda, you can take the timer off of this. Okay. Yeah, then we can see everyone's uh, smiling face. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And it's good to see everyone and 
for, for Gail and my colleague Deborah and all the members of the community board. I really appreciate all your time and energy that you continue to provide service to our neighborhood. Uh, so, you know, we're a week away from election. So that's a pretty exciting moment. I know people have seen the lines for early voting. It's really heartwarming to see how many people are out, not just in our city and our state, but around our country who are making, putting hours aside to ensure that they have their right to vote. It's really amazing. And, you know, that uh, extended hours, the Board of Elections uh, extended the early voting hours, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because there were so many people who needed to vote and there wasn't enough time. So that's first and foremost. Uh, so that I know I, I wanna just respond to quickly some of the concerns people had around the street noise and the, if there are issues going on with street noise, I encourage you to reach out to your city or state representatives. We've been talking to the mayor and their task force on noise and social distancing and the things we should be doing. We're happy to, we're in regular contact with them around concerns that people have around uh, people who aren't doing all the responsible things. Uh, this upcoming weekend, there's a bunch of events for Halloween, just be careful, there's a kids events. I know I'm doing a candy event on 7th and B. There's also gonna be a transportation alternatives right outside my office. And so if people have time in the afternoon, please join us. Uh, on, on the larger issue, I'll just mention two quick ones, if that's okay with folks. One, oh, also this weekend, we're doing a free con body class if people wanna to come to Tompkins and do a free exercise class for a half hour, 45 minutes. It's a good workout. It's a free class in Tompkins Square Park. Uh, the two quick things are just uh, one budget. We expect that we'll be going back to Albany post uh, November 3rd to talk about revenue. We all know that the city and states are in fiscal crisis, uh, that we have a revenue plan to, to Get additional revenue. We've been told that it all happened, so it's really important for you all to know how critical it is that you put pressure on your state elected officials and your governor to ensure we have additional revenue. We've been withholding four billion dollars from nonprofits across the state, and that has really resulted in layoffs in our organizations, not just in our district but everywhere across the state. So we they need that revenue, and schools need the funding, and the risk is really high. So the answer's gotta be revenue, not cuts. And the final thing I'll, I'll just mention for people who are interested is we're gonna be having some upcoming uh, uh, events in the neighborhood that are focusing on trying to do much more creative ideas if people have suggestions. We feel like we're doing the exercise class this weekend. We've done local events. We're gonna do some things that on the street, if people have ideas and suggestions of things that allow us to get together, but do socially distance. I know it's getting closer to winter, but people feel like they need to have other options. We're open to doing things. People suggested like a movie night on Avenue B and 7th Street. We could put a big screen outside my office. We're trying to be creative, but at the same time, respect people's social distance, um, but understand that people are worried that once winter comes, they're gonna be stuck in their homes for months to come. So again, I'm happy to answer a quick question or two, but I know there are a lot of other people on who want to speak. And so thank you all, be safe, vote early and take care of yourselves. Harvey, can you just give um, some more details about the exercise class uh, this weekend? What time and where? Yeah, so it's at Tompkins Square Park, uh, uh, 11, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're gonna be doing half an hour classes so people can sign up. You don't have to go sign up ahead. You can come at 11, 11.30 or 12. Uh, it's called Con Body. People want to look that up at, uh, um, at Cost Marte, who's a Lower East Side resident, uh, started this company a while back, and he's, he's been generous and provided free classes for people in our community. Thank you, Harvey. Are there any other questions? Yeah, can I, can I ask yeah. a question? Um, Harvey, yeah. I, I didn't realize, um, it's Susan, by the way. <laughs> Um, I didn't realize that the state offices were also working on some of these specific noise problems. So um, maybe tomorrow I will um, contact um, the office so we can loop each other in and maybe, um, you know, break out who's doing what, but to keep each other in the loop. So we're not duplicating each other's work. That sounds great, Susan. Happy to make sure we can continue to communicate on this and, and help each other to serve this community. I need help. <laughs> Any other questions for Assemblymember Reps team? Well, and I'll say, Susan, I'm happy to help as much as I can. That's our job is to help. All right. Thank you, Assemblymember. 
Thank you. Uh, Be well, everyone. Thanks. Gail, did you want to give your report before we go to Assembly Member Glick? I'd be glad to. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to say about the voting something funny because sometimes humor is helpful. So in one location today, because the seniors are all calling me, where do I go? Because I have a special line. Where's my line? I don't know if you're getting that, Harvey, but I'm getting it. So um, one location, this is, you can't make this up. So the department, the Board of Elections, to their credit, made a senior line. This was on the Upper West Side, as you can imagine. And the senior line was twice as long as the regular line. And so, so the senior line got to go, and the regular line was pissed. Just so you know, you never know what you try to do, what's going to be the ancillary response. So now those other people are all calling me because they didn't get to go. Oh, God. Um, also on the noise issue, I want to uh, thank you, Susan, because I saw on the state site that there were a couple of SLA uh, challenges, shall we say, in your area, and you confirmed that those were good places for the SLA to visit. So I just want to say thank you, because I never know. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so anyway, this, you know, 70 Mulberry, I'm sure you'll talk about it more. Just want to let you know that we're uh, trying to pay attention. I know the next uh, virtual town hall is November 9th. I'm sure you know that and the workshops November 10th and so on. So we're paying attention. Um, we're getting, you know, uh, hopefully I thought the moderation was quite good going into different workshops was quite good because it was a wonderful way to use Zoom. So uh, we'll be paying attention and working with the community board. Um, we had a good discussion, I think, with PSA 4 with their community council. I think there have been some challenges maybe with the community, but it seemed to me that there was a good discussion. I want to say in terms of um, Lower East Side Ecology Center and ESCRA, obviously there's a process that's happening, but I'm 100% with Lower East Side Ecology Center trying to find out why parks is slow in responding to the compost. And I don't understand why you'd have to move until construction starts. So we will be very supportive of that. Uh, I didn't understand that they were forcing you to move in a week to go, ridiculous. I, I think that the Bowery Mission um, has got a, a sale of their building on Avenue D. And I always say every single opportunity for affordable housing is what we're focused on. So uh, working with you, we will do that. I have so many. The Plato Bar was the first. But I have so many. I think I'm up to four or five where there's a restaurant and wonderful city bike. Uh, in this particular case, not only is there a wonderful city bike, but there's also a hydrant. And so I, I'm, I got two more complaints today with similar situations. We have not yet gotten a response from DOT. If there's any way, and I would love some support or input from the community board that you could, I don't know, I'm making this up, but we're all trying to be thinking outside the box, uh, move some of the bicycles so that there could be outdoors so that the restaurant can survive. So like I said, this is becoming a very common I don't know, four or five, there's probably others. I've got five complaints, actually. Um, just that whole issue of the outdoors. So Municipal Arts Society and Community Board 5 has followed up. Uh, the Times Square Alliance, Tim Tompkins, is saying the same thing. We need, like, a, and Susan has suggested the same, public realm czar, public space czar. I have, think there are about 20, 21 agencies that are now focused on the streets. You've got, obviously, you've got the business, you've got the... Uh, all the buildings department, health department, sanitation department, fire department, SLA, and the list goes on because uh, homeless, every single agency almost, and nobody seems to coordinate. Um, I got a request today, which was an interesting one, just PPE because the waiters are close to the diners when ordering is eating is taking place and restaurateurs are calling me because they want their waiters to get M95s. They literally feel that there isn't a, 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 like a barrier between them and the diners and they're going to get sick because they don't have strength in terms of their mask. So every little bit is challenging, even the Department of Finance, because there's an issue regarding uh, how you deal with the hotel taxes, et cetera. So I just want to say fire department, the list is endless. We need to think of, and maybe the community board three with your vast experience could be helpful on that. In terms of COVID, um, a, a long time ago, I started working with DEP. There's a terrific woman, Pam Lardo, who's a deputy commissioner, and she's in charge of the 14 waste uh, water plants in the city of New York. And Boston, the big article in today's papers in Boston, 
they are have been for quite some time doing testing of our waste. Just today, as a result of their very sophisticated testing, they were able six days in advance to pinpoint an outbreak that could take place. That is what we should be doing. So Pam has uh, pushed hard and she now has a lab. She has three people she's hired. You have no idea how hard that was in the support, you know, we can't hire anybody, even though it could save lives, but don't get me started. Deborah knows what I'm talking about. And so now she has her staff, she has her lab. They're doing about 35 tests a day. They could in fact do a lot more when they have this equipment, which is on order. That's the short, short version of a big pushing. But I just wanna say New York should be doing this. Um, and anyway, so very, very supportive of that. In terms of the schools and the, there's much to discuss. There are lots of parents on this call, so you know, uh, more than I do, but in terms of our focus, mostly on not just the devices, but also the internet, the bandwidth. Um, tech can take at the Department of Education three days. That doesn't work if you're trying to get your homework done, et cetera. So we're pushing really hard, given my background, um, and making sure, trying to make sure that we have the kind of support that we need for the kids. I think you know that the NYPD so-called reform and reinvention collaborative listening tour is coming to Manhattan on the 28th and the 29th this week, uptown and downtown. You probably have the information. We'll put it in the chat. It's on the NYPD and our website. I do want to have more than Queens. Queens had 150 people on. I want a lot more Manhattanites. As you know, it's the head of the Urban League, uh, New York, the head of the Federation of Protestant Welfare Agency, and the head of the Robin Hood Foundation who are doing this tour. And the idea is how do you have a better relationship between cops and community? And the, I think the governor told the mayor he had to come up with something and he's doing this. And there are three really good people, but we do need to have our own suggestions. And then finally, on the 23rd of November, like others, we're doing a big tenant resource fair. We'll send you those details. That's the quick uh, version. And I really appreciate everything that, uh, Community Board 3 is doing, because I know how hard you work. And uh, we are going to continue talking about Soho NoHo. I know what that is like. We had uh, you know, a long discussion, and we're going to try to follow some of those, some of that outline. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gail. We have a hand raised from Olympia Kazi. Olympia, go ahead. Thank you. So uh, Gail, this is a DOE question. So first of all, thank you for everything that you're doing already. Uh, there are a lot of issues with uh, the reopening of the schools, and we do need to address, you know, they just changed again the plan, and now within two weeks we need to decide for the whole year. They throw that on us in the last minute. Uh, but um, we need to be thinking also long term because they, we, they're, they cannot get there right now, but they're not also planning for next spring and next fall. And outdoor learning is going to be huge, and we need to plan now for the spring and next fall. And so what I want you to put in your radar is right now, all our schools have been shortchanged by the Department of Parks, and we need you and Carlina if she's already here. The Parks Department is not responding to any requests from the schools about using the community gardens as, as outdoor learning, even though the community gardens are willing to do that, but the Green Sub hasn't given them any license. And the Department of Parks has an answer to the request of the principals. So we need you guys to step in and push them to give responses. And also when we ask for specific areas in the parks, they didn't give them the ones that we asked, but they gave us crazy spots like the skateboarders. So now they want to put these kids there and throw the skateboarders out. So they're doing everything wrong. So we need your support because we need to be thinking about outdoor learning in the long term, not just now, you know, that it's getting cold. Okay. I'm 100% with you, Olympia. I, I've already had a big fight because downtown and uptown, two parks where there was money from the park, the, the conservancy, to pay for a tent. And the parks department said, no, we won't have tents unless they come down at night. You can't take a tent down at night. It's got chairs, it's got heating, it's got everything. You can't take it down at night. So I had such a fight because DOE said yes to the tent. And then the parks department, stupid Gail didn't think, I have to call the parks department for a tent because it's a huge park. And it was in this case, in a place that nobody goes. So it was perfect. They were even gonna put a hole for the tree. Everything was perfect. 
I couldn't get the tent. So I will definitely work with you on parks to answer your question. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Robin Chattel. Um, hi, Gail. Nice to see hi, you. Robin. Thank you again yeah. for everything you're doing. Um, I just wondered if there's any follow up with your trying to get the barricades removed from police precincts, yeah. especially precinct seven. They they close the block sometimes at three o'clock in the afternoon because they claim that they're a booking you know, office and, and it's really interfering. There's a big food giveaway. Uh, it's interfering with the food giveaway from the Abrams Arts Center, but it's just also you can't walk on the sidewalks basically on Pitt Street. Okay, well, to answer your question, we got quite a lot of attention to our report, as you know. And then we have been actually uh, reporters to their question have been asking the mayor and the PC at every press conference and they get goobly gook or whatever. And now uh, we're sending interns. Michelle has been keeping me going on this too. We've been sending interns to every precinct and we'll double check as we're gonna do, don't tell anybody, but now you'll know another report that'll list who has or has not precinct-wise uh, changed the barricades. That's as much as I can tell. We're doing everything we can, Robin. I, I don't know what else to do. I mean, we're trying. I think we have to keep putting it out again and again as to what's going on. So I, I will check on the seven, on precinct seven. Thank you, Gail. Uh, yeah. Final questions from Eric Diaz. Who is that? Hi, Gail. Hi, Eric. Hi, Gail. Uh, could you say one more time that tour that's taking place? Uh, uh, you, you said it in your report. Yeah, the police. The police tour you're talking about? Uh-huh. So yeah, it is, uh -huh. yeah, what happens is the governor said to the mayor and to every county in the whole state, all 62 counties, come up with a police community process, right? You know, that, I'm making it simple. And the governor, I think the mayor was the last of the 62, but he did come up with what he's calling the New York City Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Listening Tour. And the mayor appointed three people that I mentioned, the head of the New York Urban League, the head of the Federation of Protestant Welfare Agencies, and the head of the Robin Hood Foundation. They've been at least in Queens and maybe another borough. I think Manhattan's kind of in the middle. And they literally are listening, uh, apparently, uh, for Manhattan on the 28th. Um, that's going to be in northern Manhattan, although you can join any one of them. And then Thursday, which is at midnight in southern Manhattan, they're both at seven. And we will put the, uh, the link into the chat. Now, what gets discussed or how it's run, Eric, I don't actually know. But I do want Manhattanites to show up. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. And then last one, Gail, just a follow up. My son wants to talk. But um, there were... Um, there, there was some funding support for some local CBOs that your office was able to uh, put out a, an application for. Did there have any, any updates on that at all? Well, the only thing we did, yes, we had some money. We got cut badly this year uh, in terms of the expense money, which is what we usually give out. It's only like, you can only give like 3,500, maybe 5,000 to groups because we have so little. Um, and I think we've, we've, and then we did the census money and then of course capital, which you know. So to be honest with you, if you got capital, since we have so little, we didn't always give out the expense, but you should get a letter very soon. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Gail, for joining us Thank today. You. Thank you. Assembly Member Glick. Hi, it's um, great to be with you. And um, I always enjoy hearing the issues that uh, are of the moment for all of you. Um, Voting. Uh, let me just say that, you know, the early voting is, a, is relatively new uh, to the state. And so we've tried to expand voting, but it's a presidential year and that is always the biggest uh, turnout. And normally in um, a regular election day, there's something like 5,200 sites across the state. Uh, this early voting uh, is only is just under 300 sites. So to some extent, the the enthusiasm met with the relatively reduced number of places, and that's why we have these enormous lines. Plus, you know, people are online and they're trying to socially distance. So what would be a three-block line is now a seven-block line. So um, 
we're, I promise that we will be revisiting this. We wanted early voting to make it easier for people to vote. And we're thrilled uh, to see so many people here and around the country, but it is almost, you know, you shouldn't have to have four hours uh, to devote to standing out online. And, I, and not everybody can stand for that period of time, um, either because they have work, they have childcare, or because they've got a bad knee. So uh, we're, we're, I promise you, we will go back and try to revisit it. Aside from the fact that it's a pandemic and we have no money, we didn't get the money when we thought we had money. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna have to press for more resources uh, for our elections across the state in order to make certain that um, people have a good experience. Uh, it's nice to make new friends online, but this is not really the way that you're supposed to develop your network of uh, friends and associates. Uh, you should be able to you know, vote within um, you know, 20, 30 minutes at most. So I pledge to you, we will revisit this. Um, the, uh, the budget, uh, I, I don't know exactly what we will wind up doing. We're talking about a variety of uh, revenue raisers, but understand there are, we can't change the actual rates in the middle of the year. Uh, sales taxes down on uh, the income tax receipts are down, although not as much as we might have thought because there was an extension for people who were gonna file first in April to go to um, July. And then there are some business taxes that got pushed till October. So um, everything is down, but some aren't as down as much as we thought they might be. But the bottom line is we need money from uh, the feds. There is no way that New York State can fill the holes that we have. Um, and uh, Harvey mentioned that, you know, the CBOs, but across the board, there's a 20% withholding. Now, in some places, maybe it should have been 10% and somewhere else they could have withheld a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, it's easy and fast and efficient to just take a meat ax and say 20% we're going to withhold. Um, they didn't characterize it as a cut because the governor kept hoping that there would be a backfill. But um, the House did its job, and of course the uh, the Senate uh, was totally recalcitrant and so much more focused on filling a uh, Supreme Court seat than actually providing uh, unemployment insurance backfill for people or city and state revenue replacement, which would have helped. Um, we wrote, uh, I, I chair the higher ed um, committee and we wrote to uh, our congressional representative saying we needed a second round for higher ed. Uh, in so many parts of the state, uh, the colleges are the biggest employer. They are the economy in a lot of upstate communities. And um, a lot of those smaller independent colleges are in trouble. Uh, they had to refund uh, re their tuition uh, in st students that dropped out. Uh, some of them got tuition back, but they had to refund room and board uh, and various um, the meal plan money uh, and other uh, fees. So uh, it is a serious situation in every category. Higher ed took a big hit. Um, and financial aid took a hit, 20% withholding there as well. So um, I'm uh, working, uh, praying, uh, and um, urging voting uh, so that we have uh, a more responsive federal administration. Uh, one way or another, Next week, I am, I, I'm not much of a drinker, but I plan to get drunk one way or the other. Uh, and uh, hopefully it'll be on the positive side. So um, on the open dining, we have to keep that going during the emergency so that we can help our restaurants survive. But 
we have to have a better plan, making it permanent without any review, any ULERP, any EIS, any plan for sanitation, fire depart plowing the streets in the snow, uh, all of that has to be under consideration. So um, I look forward to working with all of you on that. And the final thing I will say about um, what has happened with the police department where they have decided that having accountability uh, is an insult. And uh, they are uh, outraged. And that is, you know, there's now contention between the people who they are here to protect and uh, yet holding them accountable when they have been um, inappropriate seems to be a shock to them. And as a result, they are, um, I would say, stand, standing down uh, and that's unacceptable. So that's why I put in a bill to require um, a residency requirement for any prospective uh, officers because they should want to live with us and not just be uh, an outside occupying force that comes in and has no regard for the communities in which they are working. Thank you, so Deborah. Thank you. Stay it. safe and vote. Vote. vote, vote. Thank you, Deborah. Any uh, questions for Assemblymember Glick? Susan, did you have a question? See. No. Oh, sorry. I saw you unmute yourself. I thought you wanted to speak. Apologies. No, sorry. No, it uh, said host asked you to unmute, so I unmuted. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. Thank you, Assembly Member. Thank um, you. Okay, I do not see any other elected officials on. I thought we might be joined by another one, but we're gonna move forward with uh, hearing from the reps. Um, I don't believe anyone from the mayor's office is on. Andrew, if you're on, if you can raise your hand. Same with public advocate Jumani Williams office. If anybody's there, you can raise your hand and let us know. All right, then we're gonna move to Ling Sha from Congress member Nidia Velasquez's office. Um, oh, good evening, uh, everyone. A uh, one quick uh, first, one very quick, uh, one quick announcement. Uh, the uh, the EIDL uh, economic injury or disaster loan that was uh, the application that you know that was closed, but then um, Congress worked the House worked to reopen it. Um, the application was reopened. It's now the final round of deadline that the deadline to apply is coming to a close. Uh, it's the deadline is going to close next week, um, October uh, 31st. So if you, um, I mean, this loan, it offers, it's for, you know, any small business, nonprofit organization of any size that, um, that has suffered substantial economic injury as a result of COVID-19, they can apply for the EIDL. Um, and uh, um, just, uh, that's a, you know, that's a quick announcement. Um, and the Congresswoman, um, and Congresswoman Velasquez has fought to reopen the application of, uh, of this loan. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, just, you know, if you know of any organization or business that might uh, need, uh, that, that might, you know, might want to apply for it, please uh, help pass out the information. It's closing, the extended deadline is closing soon next week. Um, and, uh, um, you know, other than that, the uh, the member is in Washington, D.C. this week, uh, you know, uh, um, as Assemblywoman Glick, uh, I, she couldn't have said it better. Everything is grueling in Washington and uh, um, many things depends on the results next week. And we're crossing our fingers and see. Thanks. Good night. Thank you, Lisa. Any questions for Congresswoman Velasquez's office? All right. We're oh, going to move to Sorry. Go ahead. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, one more thing. Um, our office has been working uh, to help constituents who has been having problem with mail in ballot. Uh, we are not physically open, but we can be reached either at uh, our website, velasquez.house.gov, uh, or by calling us. Um, I'll, I'll put the phone number in the chat. Like, if you know anybody who has problem with mailing ballot, uh, you know, reach out to us and we're helping. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to go to Luke Wolf from Controller Stringer's office. Luke. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Luke Wolf from City Controller Scott Stringer's office. Um, I want to spend my two minutes today to talk about some of the issues uh, we've seen with NYCHA and also want to thank the NYCHA subcommittee for uh, their work on this topic this month. Um, so this week, Comptroller Stringer called on Mayor de Blasio and uh, NYCHA Chair Gregory Rust to address some of the alarming conditions in NYCHA developments across the city that have left residents vulnerable um, as winter comes for a second wave of COVID. So conditions in many NYCHA buildings fall alarmingly short of the standards set by the CDC for co current COVID mitigation guidelines, um, which is evidenced by the unfortunate thousands of residents who have tested positive for COVID during the pandemic and um, sadly, the number who have passed away over the past few months. So what the controller did is he called on the agency to expedite capital projects that address chronic issues in the New York City's public housing developments. Um, and that includes poor ventilation, elevator addresses, and some other issues uh, that will keep, uh, that will put residents in danger as it becomes colder during the winter months. So to outline a few of those things, one, modernize the ventilation systems, which are notoriously prone to breaking down and fail to provide the adequate ventilation needed to keep people safe during COVID. Number two, provide adequate PPE and sand hand sanitizer. Number three, ensure reliability of elevators in NYCHA developments to reduce crowding. Uh, number four, provide an upgrade to functioning uh, heating and boilers, which are of course needed going into winter. And lastly, eradicate mold uh, to alleviate future mold outbreaks because we know that this is a particular concern during the pandemic uh, when a lot of health conditions can be exacerbated about by the presence of mold. Um, and the best part about this is, is the city actually has the money to do this. NYCHA was awarded $3.1 billion in FEMA money, and they've only spent 59% of this money. They also got a $300 million community development grant and only spent 78% of this money. So there is available funds to use for these type of NYCHA capital improvements, and the city wants to call on uh, excuse me, the controller wants to call on the city to make those investments now to make sure that NYCHA tenants are protected uh, going into winter. So I'll drop the full letter in the chat and happy to take any questions on that or anything else we're working on. Thank you, Luke. Are there any questions for the controller's office? All right, seeing one. none. Oh. Hi. Eric? Hi. Yes, quick question. Okay. I could repeat again that Scott, uh, Comptroller's office was uh, has a, a, a recommendation list about NYCHA. Did yes. I hear that right? Yes. Is that what and I, is? I just dropped in the chat. Uh, these are recommendations made this week to the mayor and NYCHA Chair Gregory Russ about um, spending capital uh, money to make sure that we have all the upgrades we need going into winter to one, um, provide uh, buildings as they should be. And also, especially in a pandemic, make sure we're keeping people safe. Okay, thank you for the clarification. I, I thought it was a promise of actual care. Oh, no, the, the, these are things that we think they should do now. And we also outline exactly where the funding should come from to make these rec to make some of these improvements. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, another question for you from Valentina Jones. Val? Yes, um, my question is, in terms of the assessments that were done in terms of ventilation and these other things that, I mean, ventilation is a big thing with COVID. So how do people who live in certain developments or specific developments know what the assessment was for their development so that they would know what to advocate for, what to look for, what to follow up on in terms of their development and staying safe? I can follow up uh, with you specifically on, on the assessments around developments and any um, developments that you wanna learn more about specifically to, to make sure you have that information. Um, I know that we did do, well, one, we've done 15 audits of NYCHA, including on ventilation systems. This is work going back a while, uh, but at least in the NYCHA, uh, the, excuse me, the senior developments, um, 39 out of the 41 have old ventilation systems. So I know that's a particular area of concern. Yeah, so I, I think that we, I can provide you more data, but um, especially in the senior buildings right now, where 39 out of 41 of older ventilation systems, those are should be priority with, with some of the upgrades. So, so I guess uh, I don't know how do I follow up with you. 
I'll, I'll, I'll drop my email in the chat and uh, feel free to reach out. And All right, I'll do it tomorrow. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Alicia, you had your hand up. Did you have a question or? No, I, I wanted to ask, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, Luke, if the comptroller was working at all on anything to do with this overdraft protection issues that some low income families may be having. Um, some of the banks have been using overdraft protection um, and it has a few of the elders and people that are suffering from mental health issues that get social security insurance, the SSI check. Um, they're getting direct deposits into um, banks and they're using overdraft protection and many of them cannot um, afford to pay the banks back this overdraft. I just wanted to know if uh, the comptroller knew anything about that. And if, if not, then I would be happy to have a conversation with him. Yeah, I, I don't know if we've done any work on that issue um, quite yet, but, but what you say is, is clearly very troubling and, and would definitely want to follow up offline yeah. to, to find out more and what work yeah. we are being A lot of people are being taken advantage of uh, the overdraft protections. Um, they're being charged way more than what they're getting in Social Security um, insurance checks every month. And so the banks are like, say, if you're getting $700 a month and the bank is an overdraft for $900 or up to $1,000 and people are now spending over that amount that what they get, now they're stuck in a hardship and their whole check for the following month is going to go directly to the bank and they have nothing to live off of. Let me give you a, a call on that tomorrow because I want to find out more and see what we sure, can do. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to Victor from Congressmember Carolyn Maloney's office. Victor? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney kicked off early voting week by strolling to the polls with downtown Manhattan community leaders. Quote, as early voting begins across our state today, we reflect on the importance of this fundamental democratic practice and recognize that even in these uncertain times, all New Yorkers can make their voices heard. During this pandemic, there are a variety of options of casting ballots, in-person early voting, absentee mail-in ballots, and in-person voting on election day. Across the country, we have already seen millions of Americans experience the ease and safety of early voting and voting by mail. Now it's our time to show that New Yorkers care about democracy and demand to have a hand in shaping it. I hope that every New Yorker takes advantage of the multiple voting options available and know that their voice truly matters in this election and always, said the Congresswoman. And the Congresswoman wishes the members of the board and the community a safe and festive Halloween. Thank you, Victor. Are there any questions for the Congresswoman's office. All right. Seeing none, we're going to move to um, Assemblymember Yulin, Yulin News Office. Shivani. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, all right, I will keep it quick tonight. Um, so the biggest thing is the Assemblymember's fees, fines, and surcharges bill. Um, she introduced this a little or like earlier this month, but it just got numbered. Um, so it basically, um, the bill would remove all detrimental financial pen penalties from the criminal legal system, including court surcharges and fees, mandatory mini minimum fees for penal law and vehicle and traffic offenses, and availability of incarceration as a remedy for failure to pay a fine surcharge or fee. Um, it does a bunch of other stuff too, but that's the main gist of it. Um, more information is on our board report. Um, she has also continued um, to do food distribution throughout the entire pandemic um, with a focus of ensuring that everyone has access to nutritious and culturally sensitive meals. If um, you need food, know someone who needs food, please feel free to contact our office. I'll leave my email in the chat in a second um, and we can figure out how we can help you. Um, as a bunch of the other electeds have already said, um, 70 Mulberry com um, community meetings continue with a virtual town hall on November 9th. Um, so it's really important to continue community input in that. Um, and then as always, we are continuing to do our PPE drop. So if you know of anyone who needs PPE for any events you're doing or anything like that, um, we would be very happy to help out. We're also, I've revamped the weekly newsletter. So if you 
um, aren't subscribed but want to be, definitely feel free to um, shoot me an email. Like I said, again, I'll put it on the sidebar and let me know you want to be a part of it. We just give updates about what's going on in the district, COVID related and also other things. Um, and I think that's it, unless there's any questions. Any questions for Shivani? All right, thanks Shivani. Uh, Greer Mayhew from Senator Kavanaugh's office, are you on? Uh, Chantel is, I'm here for, here for the office. <laughs> um, hello everyone, thank you for having us. Uh, please excuse my background in disarray. Um, the Senator echoes our partner in government's uh, sentiments as far as uh, Voting is concerned. If you're willing and able, go out and, and vote and exercise that right. Um, as far as housing goes, we just wanted to give an update about the uh, Emergency Rental uh, Relief Act. Um, there were uh, approximately 94,000 individuals who applied, 83,000 online and 11,000 via paper applications. Uh, 51,000 individuals as of now were denied for not meeting the criteria. Um, the state has distributed 19.5 million to 8,400 people, uh, according to SOCIET. Um, there is an appeal process and we are encouraging all individuals to uh, appeal if they do uh, get a denial. So, and you can forward them to our office. I'm going to throw my uh, information in the chat shortly. We, I apologize, let me go. So um, as far as COVID spikes are concerned, our office is taking every step possible to ensure that um, the spikes are managed, contained, and stopped. We too are doing PPE drops. We were able to do some distribution to AFI, ADAPT Forsyth, and um, six street residences, BRC Senior Center, CCBA, Confucius Plaza, and Grand Street Settlements. So if you know of any organizations that need some PPE, please send them my way as well. Um, as far as local issues, our office is closely monitored, monitoring the Rutgers 2 project following our public forum hosted in September. We've been working with our partners in government and the Two Bridges Tower Resident, Resident Association to voice and address disturbances related to the project and will continue to do so throughout the duration of the project. Um, and then also we were able to do a, a tour of the new harm reduction center on uh, 35 East Broadway, uh, assembly member Yuling New staff was there as well. It is a wonderfully newly renovated and modern, modern facility. And together we sat through an informational session and explanation of the service menu to promote education and encourage dialogue between um, the neighbors in, in the neighborhood. So if you need anything from us, I'll throw my email in the chat and feel free to reach out to our office. Thank you, Chantal. Chantel, are you our new rep or is Greer just not here tonight? I am. You're the new rep? Okay. Got it. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, any questions for Chantel? All right. So Senator Hoyleman's office. Carolyn, are you here? Or anybody else from Senator Hoyleman's office? I'm here. It's Caroline. Oh, hi, Caroline. Sorry. How's it going? Good. How are you? <laughs> good, good. How's my dog? Oh, she's doing well. She's fast asleep right now. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to be pretty quick. I dropped the board report in our chat. Um, and uh, I guess like everybody else, the big theme this week is to vote. Um, so we have a, a little guide in our report, just in case you couldn't find something else. Um, Susan asked me to give a quick update on where we are with the community board budgeting proposal for Campos Community Center. Um, so if everybody recalls, CB3 had asked um, for some renovations to be done to the Campos Community Center. We've taken a mini step forward. NYCHA has submitted the preliminary application um, to the Senate, which is a big thing. Um, and it basically contains everything that was in the uh, resolution. Um, and so that's really, really good. We didn't have to cut anything out. Um, so I will keep everybody posted, um, but that's where we are right now. Uh, a couple of other uh, things. 
to be aware of in the next week or so. Um, Senator Hoylman ha uh, had a bill uh, to require seat belts in the back seats of cabs and livery cars um, that will go into effect um, November 1st, which is this Sunday. Um, so you just have to wear your seatbelt now. Um, everything else I think you can look at in our board report. Uh, and if I can answer any questions, just let me know. All right, thanks, Caroline. Thanks, Mike. Any questions? All right, Kana from Council Member Chin's office, are you on with us? Hi everyone, it's Harmony. Harmony. Hi, um, Harmony. Kana will be joining us next week. Something came up for her. Uh, but ev evening everyone, this is Harmony and I'm here are some updates from our office. So last week, Council Member Chin released an official statement reiterating her call on DIFTA to delay the Senior Center request for proposals. Senior centers have navigated multiple obstacles during the pandemic to continue providing vital resources to older New Yorkers. And for that, we urge DIFTA to provide transparent steps on senior center reopening and the path forward. This Friday, Council Member Chin will also be chairing an oversight hearing on the future of senior center home delivered meals. If you're interested in testifying, I'll include a link to sign up in the chat box. With financial insecurity on the rise, our city must maintain the programs that provide our most vulnerable populations with relief. And last week, Council Member Chin and her colleagues passed intro 2030, which keeps the threshold to qualify for scree and DREE programs at 50,000. This will allow a greater number of seniors and disabled New Yorkers to qualify for rent increase exemptions. And last Tuesday, we partnered with Earth Matter New York to celebrate their newest community composting drop-off site at the Bowling Green Green Market. While we are excited to see these community composting programs return after fighting to restore funding throughout the city, we know that there's still much more work to be done. And finally, our partnership with the Community First Food Pantry is only growing stronger. Since May, we've served over 13,500 families and we're always on the lookout for more volunteers to aid us in these efforts. I'll put the sign up form in the chat box for anyone who's interested in joining our dedicated team of volunteers. Thanks, Harmony. Any questions for Council Member Chen's office? All right, finally, we're gonna to go to Jeremy Unger for Council Member Rivera's office. Thanks, Michael. Always happy to uh, close it out on a high note, hopefully. Um, and uh, for those uh, who don't know me, and I'm Chairman, I'm the Councilwoman's uh, Legislative and Communications Director and CB5 Rep. I'm just covering for Isabel, uh, who couldn't make it tonight. Um, obviously, everyone's talked a lot tonight about the election and early voting issues. Councilwoman Rivera has been a strong advocate for pretty substantial change at BOE, I think, since the uh, primary. Um, you know, recently what we've been calling for were uh, additional voting hours, which we heard today that the Board of Elections is going to move to do. So starting on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, there will be expanded voting, early voting hours, which is great to hear. Um, I don't know if those are up on the website yet, but you can go to the Board of Elections website to uh, check those hours. Uh, in addition, we're also calling for future elections, I think given the lines to uh, make sure that they have, at the very least, uh, you know, uh, ETA estimated times for uh, how long it will take to be finishing the line so that if you don't wanna be like Mayor de Blasio today and stand in line for three and a half hours in Park Slope, you can uh, plan accordingly. Um, the, you know, and, and then obviously there's a, a whole slate of things we wanna tackle, I think after the election. I'm certainly happy that our state colleagues, I think have all shown a lot of, uh, desire to tackle the constitutional issues at the state level that are going to be needed to make the real substantive changes we need at the Board of Elections. Um, in other news, the uh, census count ended this month a little bit early, unfortunately, because of the Trump administration's uh, pretty blatant disregard for a desire to get an accurate count. Uh, even with that meddling in the Supreme Court's rulings, uh, New York City did finish above its actual estimated uh, count or estimates for what it was supposed to hit. Uh, we ended up at about 61.8% for uh, self-response rates. The US Census Office had expected that we would hit about 58%. So great job to everybody in CB3, which by the way, was uh, did I think one of the, uh, probably the best totals of any part of uh, Council in Rivera's area. So big shout out to you guys for all the great work everyone did on that effort. Um, and then on some local issues, I think a lot of folks are aware of the situation on 14th Street between uh, First Avenue and Avenue A there. For those who may not know, there's uh, 
I've been a group of people who are uh, selling uh, kind of random uh, miscellaneous items on the street. These are not kind of vendors in the, in the sense of people selling fruit or vegetables. These are people just kind of selling really random uh, items. Um, so there have been kind of issues of um, uh, violence on in the area as well. And uh, while a lot of these people, I think, are housed in the area, some are also homeless. So it's become a, a big issue in our office that we're working with on Council Member Pat with Council Member Powers on. We have been in contact with NYPD, DCA, uh, SBS, um, DOH, every agency under the sun. And unfortunately, it's really infuriating that the uh, mayor's office and their agencies kind of continue to play hot potato with this, which is a really serious concerning problem on a safety perspective, both in terms of the violence, both in terms of the uh, COVID risks that are posed, and then just obviously the quality of life concerns. And so, uh, you know, we've now reached out to the governor's office to see if there's something that they can do in this front. We've also reached out to the Street Vendor Project to see if they can also work uh, as kind of an ally in the community to hopefully create some better solutions there. Uh, you know, it's certainly a situation where uh, there needs to be a solution and there needs to be a solution as quick as possible. So we're going to continue to work on that and we'll keep everyone updated. Um, and then the uh, the other issues um, that I wanted to just briefly uh, touch base on, we have a tenant resource fair, a digital tenant resource fair this Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, we're doing that in partnership with Council Member Diana Ayala's office. And if you would like to attend, you can RSVP to Ivy Rosado. I'll drop her email in the uh, chat box. And speaking of Ivy, for those who know her, uh, Ivy has been a fantastic member of our staff as our Director of Public Outreach. And sadly, uh, this Friday is going to be her last day with our office. We are all really uh, disappointed, but happy for her. She's going to be uh, taking some time off and then moving into full time social work, uh, helping uh, constituents, uh, hopefully in the East Village and other parts of New York City, whenever role she takes on. So we're all really proud of her and the work she's done. Um, and with that, I can take any questions. Susan. Thank you. Um, hi, Jeremy. And the, uh, ven the unauthorized vendors, um, mm -hmm. we've gotten an incredible amount of complaints also, and I've been working with Isabel in your office on this. And it, she also brought it up at our district service cabinet meeting. And it seems that no agency in our community board will take responsibility for it. But my understanding is across 14th Street and the 13th Precinct um, that the police there are giving tickets for unauthorized vending. Is that true? I'm not sure. Um, I will check in with Isabel to confirm if that is the case. And if that is the case, that's certainly something that is incredibly concerning. If there's not, um, you know, uh, equal enforcement measures being taken or just even basic communication being taken. So. Let me check back in with okay. uh, Isabel and Councilor Powers team and get back to you. Thank you. Any other questions for Jeremy? All right, I don't see any other hands up. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, Michael. Give Ivy our best. Of course, I know she's gonna miss all of you. Yeah. All right, that ends the uh, elected officials report part of our board meeting tonight. We're now gonna move to the roll call and the approval of the minutes from the August 2020 meeting. And then I will be handing the range over to our chair, Alicia, for the rest of the meeting. Thank you again to Linda and Clint for stepping in after my epic computer meltdown <laughs> earlier this evening. I really appreciate it. Michelle? Hi, I'll be doing the roll call. Oh, sorry, Eric. No problem. Okay. Uh, David Adams. Yes, yes. Yaron Altman. Yes. Jess, Jesse Beck. Yes. Dominic Berg. Yes. All right. Lee Berman. Yes. Got you. Carlin Chan. Yes. Jonathan Chu. Yes. All right, guys. David Crane. Yes. Felicia Cruikshank. Felicia. Okay. 
Moving on. Eric Diaz. Yes. Alistar Akinamakis. Yes. Got you. Shirley Fennessy. Shirley? Okay. Ryan Gilliam. Yes. All right. Thank you. Deborah Glass. Yes. Got you. Andrea Gordillo. Yes. Got you. Herman Hewitt. Yeah. Herman? Yes. Got you. Trevor uh, Howard. That, 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 uh, that's, that's Felicia trying to break through, I believe. She, she was yes, that's Felicia. <laughs> oh, okay. Got you, Felicia. Let me put you on. Okay. Okay. Trevor Holland. Yes. Awesome. Linda Jones. Yes. Got you. Valentina Jones. Yes. Got you. Tatiana Jorio. Tatiana. She's not you. here. Lisa Kaplan. Yes. Olympia Kazi. Olympia. Yes. Sorry, I had my microphone up. Can you hear me now? Yes. I got you. Yes. Joseph Kearns. Yes. Michelle Coopersmith. Yes. Got you. May Lee. Yes. Perfect. Wendy Lee. Yes. Got you. Alicia Lewis Coleman. Yes. David Louie. Yes. Ellen Liu. Yes. Got you. Michael Mar Marino. Yes. Alexandra Militano. Yes. Michael Perlis. Yes. Tariq Ramos. Yes. Got you. Paul Rangel. Yes. Carolyn Ratcliffe. Yes. Damaris Reyes. Yes. Got you. Richard Ropiak. Yes. Thomas Rosa. Tomas Rosa. He's on. Tomas. Okay, I'm gonna go back to you. Robin Chattel. Yes. Heidi Schmidt. Yes. Larissa Scheinberg. Yes. Clint Smeltzer. Yes. Anisha Stephen. Yes. Sandra Strother. Sandra Strother. She's not on. Josephine Velez. Yes. Troy Velez. Yes. yes. Got you. Rodney Washington. Yes. Got you. Kathleen Webster. Yep. Jackie Wong. Yes. And Ricky Wong. Yes. Got you. Tomas Rosa, last call. Okay. Okay. He's on. He might, unless he's having audio trouble, Tom, if you want to use the chat, if you can hear us. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll look out for that. All right. Thanks, Eric. Okay, uh, thank you, Eric, and thank you, Michael, for host uh, for doing the beginning of our meeting tonight. Thank you so much. Please bear with me as I had some dental work done, and so if I seem a little bit sluggish tonight, uh, bear with me. Okay, um, so I want to just thank everyone for coming out tonight for this October Zoom meeting for Community Board Three. Um, I would like to start off by saying a few things, not a, not a whole lot tonight to talk about because we have a rather long agenda tonight. Um, but first things first, um, for those that worked with me on the um, task force for the Baruch bathhouse, I wanted to announce that the RFP has been released. And um, for the members uh, of the task force, I believe I mailed you, I, I emailed you a copy of the RFP um, today. So 
this is um, being proposed as a community sports um, and programming facility. And if, if those that don't know or are not familiar with the bathhouse, it sits in the back of the Baruch houses um, in a little cut, right? As we like to say, um, and it was a it was a really historical building at one point in time, and now the building is dilapidated, and so the residents of the community and um, the Baruch uh, residents of, of NYCHA would love to see it restored to something that the children and the residents could use again, not just for them, but for all members of the community. And hopefully we'll get a really great response to the RFP. Um, I do believe the cutoff date to apply is, let's see. November 24th, the proposals are due. So or no, at 3 p.m. Um, and so if you are interested in applying for this, uh, you can get in contact with Eric Weiss at the Parks Department. Um, if you need more information about that, please uh, email me and I'll give you all the details to that RFP. Um, so as I promised you, I told uh, last time, last month, I said that I would tell you the list of the hubs that are providing adult meals in our district um, for adults that are, uh, and not just adults, but also for children or college students or anyone that has food deprivation or someone that may need to supplement their income by having some um, meals provided to you. They are, our public schools are having um, some hubs as they call them. And a few of them are in our district. We have uh, PS19 at 185 First Avenue, PS64 on 6th Street and Avenue B, uh, Marta Valley high, uh, high School and Middle School at 145 Stanton and, and Suffolk Street, PS188 at 442 East Houston Street, and University uh, Middle School, which is the old PS56, is at 220 Henry Street. They provide meals from 3 to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, PS19 is closed this week due to staffing issues, but please be sure to share this with neighbors or anyone that could use a supplement and, and meals in their homes, okay? Um, okay, so everyone is saying it. I'm gonna keep saying it. Voting is a must. Please, everyone, go out and vote. Um, this is not for community board members because we all know the importance of voting, but actually members of the public, please knock on a neighbor's door. Just remind people every vote does count. We need every, every voice heard for this election. Um, my people didn't get the right to vote until 1965, African-American women in particular. I know we stand together in this and saying that we have to be unified. Um, as people of color, and we know that it is an execution of our 15th Amendment. So let's do it, everybody. Let's rock this boat. Um, and last but not least tonight, I want to congratulate our past chair, Gigi Lee, and her husband. Um, they gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, Gimme Lee Lin, and she weighed six pounds and 11 ounces. Beautiful baby born on the 13th of October. And so if, if you see Gigi or you know Gigi and you have a relationship with her or uh, just give her a congratulations or send her a text or an email or whatever, just let her and her husband know that you are thinking of them during this time of welcoming their new baby. Um, and please don't forget to fall back. I'm loving it. I'm looking forward to Sunday getting that extra hour. <laughs> if for those that don't know, I'm reminding you now, we get that extra hour back into our uh, sleeping beds uh, on November 1st. So change your batteries and your smoke detectors and get that extra hour's worth of sleep. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to, that's the end of my uh, report tonight. I'm gonna move on to our district manager's report. Susan Stetzer, please. Okay, thank, thank you, Alicia. Um, first, a reminder that city offices will be closed next Tuesday, so Community Board 3 will be closed. Um, the police department is alerting people um, that there may be demonstrations on election day or after, um, particularly depending on how long it takes to declare a uh, winner. The anticipation is that they'll be peaceful, but you may um, have to 
uh, plan for street closures. And unfortunately, the businesses are asked to be on alert again for possible broken windows and stolen goods, which seems to um, be from a few people taking advantage when there are demonstrations. Um, the police report, uh, the police department, police reform and reinvent, reinvention listening session that Gail talked about. Um, I also got the information today. And um, while Gail was speaking, I sent it to all the board members. Uh, so you have the information to RSVP to attend on Facebook or um, a Zoom meeting. Just a few last background notes regarding the district need statement and budget priorities that you'll be voting on tonight. <clears throat> we have to submit these documents on a program that city planning designed for the documents. And it connects the statement to the priorities. And um, what's new under this administration is that all the information is captured from all 59 boards to be able to give statistics on um, what the needs are, are and, and how the 59 boards rank them. I'm not sure how all this information is really used or if it is, but there are times when it's really important. Uh, just to give an example, um, since COVID um, has impacted our budget, the city totally eliminated the summer youth employment program and the um, commercial lease assistance program. And because of um, community response and community outrage, both of those programs were reinstated. So it, it is important to be able to advocate for programs um, that are vulnerable. And the goal of this is to bring more money and bring services into our community. So if a program's already well-funded, um, you know, that program won't, won't bring additional funding or services to the community. Um, just an FYI, Target on Grand Street will be installing reverse vending machines outside for the recycling of cans and bottles. P people will probably be wondering um, what's going on. And as a few of the elected official offices have uh, mentioned, we're getting a tremendous amount of complaints because um, city services are cut due to no money and because mostly because of outdoor noise. Um, not every outdoor dining corridor has a noise problem. It isn't necessary, it's just some areas. Um, we particularly find that Lower Avenue B and Upper Avenue A um, elicit more complaints. It is almost impossible to get the city to enforce. Um, there's many, many, many agencies that are not enforcing. And, you know, we've been in conversation. We're not asking for fines. We're not asking for, um, you, know, uh, you know, violations. What we want the agencies to do is to tell the businesses what they can be doing and what they can't be doing um, and letting them know what's, what's expected. That is not happening. Um, and just the last uh, on voting at Compost Plaza, if you vote there, um, I did vote there yesterday at noon and there was no line. So I just wanna recommend that. Um, so there's no questions, that's it. Okay, I don't see any hands. Okay, let me, thank let me you. Just look, let me look and see, Susan, hold on a second. No, there's no hands up. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Okay, I, I don't see any hands. Okay, great. Okay, now we're going to, so rather than us have our district needs statement and capital expense priorities uh, right now, we're going to move it down at towards the end of our um, after the report so that everyone gets an opportunity to share their reports and then we can work on this, uh, the last part of this, which it take it, it shouldn't take up that much time, but I want to, in, in case people didn't get a chance to review it or whatever, then we'll just go over a few things. All right, with your permission, we will move on to committee reports at this time. Um, so we're gonna go past executive and into the nominating, Miss Linda Jones. Linda, where are you? 
nominating committee. All right. I'm, I'm going to share my screen in a minute here. Um, so I, I, what I want to do is review the process uh, in case you're not familiar with it and also because it has changed. Let's see. Let's try that one. There we go. Okay. Um, so those of you who are not familiar will include everything that's normally in the election process and also those things that are different because we are meeting via Zoom. Um, election, first of all, the election will be held at the next full board meeting and that's November 24th. Um, about a week before that meeting, I will send out an email containing a short statement written by each candidate so you can get a little information about their backgrounds. At the full board meeting on November 24th, each candidate will also have the opportunity to make a brief presentation. So again, you can become more familiar with them. After that presentation, we will vote. Now, if you remember times past that people would receive a paper ballot it would have your name on it, it would be your paper ballot and you would fill it out and that's how you voted. We can't do that. So instead we're going to use a, on, an online form that will look similar to the paper ballot. Um, you'll receive an email just before the meeting with a link to that form. I think ideally you will wait to vote until after the candidate presentations. You go click the link, you'll go to the form, you'll fill it out and you will have voted. Once the candidates have spoken, okay, after all have voted, the votes will be tallied by members of the nominating committee and I will announce the results before the end of the meeting. Are there any questions about this? Does anybody look at no I don't see any hands, Linda. I don't either. Okay, so that's the process. Just one question. A couple of things. Oh, sorry, I think Susan has a question. Yeah, um, I just want to know if anybody has any problems, um, is there a way for them, will they be able to, um, to note it in the chat room and get help from somebody? Yes, I think what we'll do is if we'll have a phone number where if you are not, unable to use the form for some reason, you can call that number and dictate your vote to that person that's ma managing the phone, be one of our committee members. Um, I just want to point out that I've had questions, people having a little nervousness about their vote not being secret. The vote has never been secret. It's public information. Um, so it, you, it, it will be known how you voted. That's always the case. And the records can be foiled uh, by sending a simple email request to the office. And, the, and Susan tells me that this does happen. So just understand that. And the last thing on the list is just the names of the nominating committee members. Me, Ellen Liu, Paul Rangel, Robin Chattel, and Troy Nellis. And you I have a question from Paul, Linda. Yes, Paul. Not so much a question, but uh, do you want me to show what the form would look like to the entire board right now, just to get a sure. feel for it? Or? Sure. It's a sample form, doesn't have anybody's names. So I'll stop my share. I will make you a co-host here. Okay. Go for it. All right, can everyone see that? Yes, sir. So when um, I'll most likely be the one to uh, email this uh, link out to everyone, um, you'll get something in your email and it'll, it'll pop up something like this. So those of you who've used Google Forms before, you'll see something like this. You'll see your, you would have to type in the email address that you've provided to the community board office. Um, I will send that. I will send the link to the email that was provided to the community board office, and that's the one you should be responding with on your email. Um, you will put your full name as well. Um, everything is required, and then you'll see the votes. So you'll see chairperson, person one, two, three, or four, or an abstention, um, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. That's what it will look like, and if you want to send a copy of your responses back to you, all you got to do is click that and it will send it back to you as well. So that way you have a copy of your responses and then I get tallies automatically generated um, on a separate sheet. So that's what it looks like on our end and I'll send that over to Linda during the full board meeting next month. 
Does anyone have any questions for me? Yeah, yeah, I got a question. I'm using my phone. I don't think I know how to do it off the phone. You're using your phone at like an iPhone or something? Yes. Yeah, you, you'll be able to do it on your phone. You just go, to, right. go to the link and you'll still see the form. I see the form now. It's kind of small, but yeah. all right. Wait, I see what I can do. Yeah, okay. You you'll still be able to fill it out if you yeah, if you can fill things out on your phone. You still you'll still be able to fill it out, and it will still send back to it. Okay. Can I ask a question? When will you be sending this? Because I get a lot of emails. I'm sorry. It will be toward around a little bit before the beginning of the full board meeting. Of which? Of the meeting itself. The meeting will okay. be. Starting like at a week 30, you might see it at 6 15. Then, like then a week before, a few days before? No. No, like 15 day. minutes before. Same day. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, everyone's going to need to have their uh, a computer or something handy for next week's meeting that they can log into their email and click the link. Okay. Okay. And Linda, that's all for your report tonight? No, not quite. Okay. I do have my uh, list of candidates, okay. which you can all have a quick glance at. Um, we did pretty well in getting a, a nice bunch of candidates this time, I think. And I'm not going to read everybody, but you can all see who it is. Um, you're going to receive more information about each of these people in, in, the, in about you know a couple of weeks when I send out the the statements. Okay, any questions? All right. We're not seeing anything. Are we supposed to be seeing oh, something? I'm not sure. Oh, I see Valentina has her hand up. Val? Yeah, and nobody else does. Wait a minute. No, Michael asked my question. I don't see anything, and I'm, I'm hearing that I'm, I'm supposed sorry. to. Now oh, you'll see God. it. <laughs> sorry. Now do you see it? No, we just see your, your desktop. Oh, shoot. Stupid system. Because <laughs> I have two monitors. Too fancy here. Try again. Okay, how's that? There we go. Yeah. And oh. Valentina, you had a question? No, that that was the question. I I, I wasn't seeing anything. Okay. Well, that was a good question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody happy? So, more more next November. Linda, I do actually have a question. I'm sorry for yeah. the people who were running unopposed. Is there a certain threshold they have to meet in order to be elected, or are they just elected? I uh, well, yeah, I guess I. I well, either you vote for them or you abstain. Um, so I think that, I don't know. Hello? This is David Adams. We had a case where a person didn't get half the votes and he wasn't elected, even though he was unopposed. Oh, okay. Thank you. I, That's I don't, my understanding I don't also. Anything like that in, oh, David, I bet you know the answer. David Craig. That is my understanding as well, although I haven't uh, seen it occur like David has. Yeah, I'm, I'll double check the bylaws, but I just, think you're right. I have just one other question. Are you supposed to ask for nomination just in case someone else wants to throw their hat in, or this is going to be it? Um, I will ask for nominations um, if there's any if there's any vacancies uh, at the November meeting. But I think there won't be any vacancies. My, uh, David uh, Crane, don't you have to ask uh, to close out the, the nominations Tonight. or something? Yeah, tonight you should uh, you should ask if there are further nominations and then close them. Okay, further nominations, raise your hand. <laughs> oh. I don't see any hands. I don't either. Okay, thank you, David. If I do this enough years, I'm gonna get it right. <laughs> I think you officially have to state that nominations are now closed maybe, just yeah. for the record. So nominations are now closed. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. Okay. Um, all right. Now we're going to move on to uh, if there's no other questions for Linda, 
at this time, we're going to move on. Let me see any hands. I don't see any hands. Okay, that's it, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Welcome. All right. We'll now move on to economic development. Anisha. Um, we didn't have any resolutions in economic development this month, um, so there are no other updates. Okay, thank you, Anisha. Okay, uh, Parks, Trevor. Yeah, two resolutions which were very well supported. Uh, you can take a look at the agenda if you want some information. That was for the preservation of the East River Park track house and tennis comfort center comfort station, which you saw a brief presentation earlier uh, during the community portion and the support for the return of the LAFC College Center's compost yard to the east to the new East River Park ESCR. Another very long and thorough uh, resolution in support of that. Just to note, because I know we're going to get into district needs um, in the ranking of budget priorities, is that the committee has spent a, a lot of time um, on ranking these priorities. And I know we go through this every year of trying to move things around, but understand that the, the, we have ranked our uh, particular priorities and um, <coughs> just hoping that we don't get into a too long discussion about uh, changing uh, how, how we go about that and changing that. We also did that in exec. I'm saying this partially because uh, most of them are parks or a lot of them are parks in certain areas and uh, the com committee has already spent uh, a substantial amount of time on that. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Okay, next we have Health and Human Services, May. Uh, hi, so there were no votes taken at this meeting uh, except for the district needs and the budget priorities. Um, we also had a presentation from the Alliance for Positive, you know, the Lower East Side Harm Reduction Center, which um, I think somebody, one of the electeds at the meeting tonight mentioned there was a site visit. Um, they're the ones at 35 East Broadway. So we had a presentation from them, uh, you know, quite a, <laughs> um, they brought a lot of their staff members. Um, you know, at all different levels. And everybody, they all talked about, you know, their organization and why it was important. And we saw a slideshow and we were told maybe one day, you know, we'll get to go on a site visit too. But probably not, not anytime soon. So that's the end of my, is there, are there any questions? Let's see, hold on me, let me check. There's a hand raised from Olympia. Uh, yes, should I go? Yeah, Olympia, go ahead. Thanks. So mainly, uh, I just wanted to confirm, your committee is also the committee that uh, covers schools, right? Well, can you uh, talk louder? I'm sorry, I, don't, I can't hear you. Uh, so uh, I was saying, your committee is also the committee that covers schools and DOE? Oh, you're like getting fainter and fainter. But yes, yeah, schools, yes. OK, so I'm taking off my headphones. Maybe this will work better. Yeah. Better. Yes. Sorry, I'm going to have to put them back again because my kids are going to bed. But um, so my, I wanted just to ask that is, I know traditionally the community board defers to CC and all these other things for school issues, but what is happening right now, it is historic and detrimental for the neediest kids in our community. And so I wanted to urge your committee to consider doing a resolution about, you know, this completely inappropriate reopening quote unquote plan, basically there is no plan. Every day we get different announcements. And so, um, I mean, I don't know if this is the right venue to mention it, but uh, I would you know, urge your committee to consider a resolution, add it maybe in your agenda the next month, because it's like more people need to speak up about what is happening right now. It is really gonna, you know, uh, put a generation back of a lot of kids. Well, yeah, I'm familiar with what's going on exactly. And um, the CEC that is not happy with it either, believe, you know, as you probably know. Um, I think we should I, speak I would up just to... say, Yeah, I would just say it's not a single resolution either. You know, yeah. so we just have to, we have to dive into the details, but now is not the time to do it. So we can do it later. And our agenda for November is already set. Mm. As is for the other committees. We can't add anything to November. Good. But we, you know, we'll, we'll, Maybe we'll we talk could about do it. At exec, we can discuss after. <clears throat> okay, Olympia, thank you. May, is there anything else you'd like to say? 
May Lee? Oh, no. I was just I was just shaking my head, but oh. no, it's no. Okay. All right. Thank you, May. Um, SLA? Uh, we received all of the stipulations for all of the items except for one. That item is number 13. Um, they gave us a stipulation that they amended to uh, allow for having wait lines. So this is, if you look at the resolution for 13, the second whereas clause describes what the business is proposing to be, and it's proposing to be a very small pizza restaurant. And um, I would propose um, an amended uh, resolution in this case to deny, and I drafted the resolution uh, or redrafted the resolution to include whereas clauses, and I can go through them, which will include information about uh, what the applicant what we were preparing to resolve, what the applicant um, would not agree to, and why for this particular location and the method of operation and hours of operation, we uh, have an expectation that a, a business will not have wait lines. So do you want me to go through the reading of the resolution? I can do it, or the, the amending. So it would be, the title would be to deny. It, in place of the last whereas clause and the last therefore uh, and the therefore clause, there would be a clause that says whereas given that this location um, will be continued to op uh, will continue to be operated as a pizzeria, CB3 uh, initially recommended the denial of this applicant and the applicant unless the applicant agreed to make as conditions of its license stipulations that um, and then listing the enumerated stipulations in the therefore clause. Uh, then the next whereas clause would be uh, whereas the applicant would not agree to ensuring that there would be no wait lines outside of its business, but otherwise agreed to um, the other stipulations memorializing its proposed method of operation. Then whereas community board three has asked applicants proposing to operate licensed businesses with this method of operation and late night hours of operation in this area to agree that they will not have wait lines outside um, given that the streets in this area are already overwhelmingly congested with people from existing licensed businesses. I'm sorry, I was just looking for my pen. Um, and, um, and noise from those people um, and the vehicles that transport them. Uh, and then the last paragraph would be the therefore clause, which uh, would say to deny the application and the details of the, the applicant, the name and the address. Okay. Any questions for Alex? I guess I do. I have to move that in lieu of the. This is. Hold on, Alex. Since it's a denial as opposed to a, a approval, which it was before. And I typed it for Michelle in the event that it passes. May I? Yes. Uh, it's just an amendment. I would just say, you know, if there's no objection, then we'll amend that, as I just explained. So if there's no objection, we'll amend it as, as, as previously stated. Yes. I don't see any hands and up and up and objections. No objections, Alex. I don't see any hands of objection. Everything is everything else is otherwise the same. Okay. Okay. So, uh, David, do we vote at the, at the end? All of this is going to be included with the amendment, right? The amendment was just passed, so the the motion is oh, now amended, motion. and yeah, we will vote on the motion with the. The motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I'll send it to Michelle and, and Susan. Thank you. Okay. No hands. No hands. Okay. All right, Alex. Thank you. Let's enforce the line out front. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not reading the chat. Um. Landmarks. Okay. Um, so Landmarks Committee had two uh, resolutions this month. Uh, the first of them 
was a certificate of appropriateness for 538 by 40 East 11th Street, the free public baths of the city of New York. The, this is being, con this building is being converted into a residence and home office space for some, some lucky people. It's a beautiful building. Uh, they have a number of proposals to improve the steps and install gift grates. And the best thing is they're going to restore the whole facade. And we did approve that resolution, that a certificate of appropriateness. The second one was for 217 East 5th Street, which is one of the buildings that interestingly has a rear building, which would have been a carriage house at one time. There are several along there. Um, the rear buildings are not visible from the street. They are making changes to provide ADA access to the entire, all the floors in the building and the roof, which involves the most, most important changes, installation of an elevator. Um, we approve that. Any questions? Let's see. Um, the three point three million dollar project include two new no hands, Linda. No hands, no hands. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. It's talking. Thank you, Linda. Okay, uh, land use, Jackie has a resolution this month. Can't hear you, Jackie. I'm sorry. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, um, so good evening, um, everyone. So Land Use Deep has a resolution this month on Grand Street Q. So um, we reviewed and approved Grand Street Q's application to build two new buildings on Broom Street with 480 um, affordable units. And one building is for um, regular affordable and the other is for senior citizens. Um, the developer has entered into some agreements with the Grand Street Q Tenants Association, and these agreements are um, parking, um, air, air purifier, and other arrangements during construction. So um, we put it in the wrestle that um, we want to see this agreement um, being legally enforceable, and we also support um, deeper project affordability. Um, and there's a small update on two bridges um, rezoning application. So this month, um, two bridges co-applicants asked CB3 the permission to revise the um, rezoning plan in response to the recent ruling made by the court on the two bridges area. Um, so basically in the past, we assumed that those uh, towers could not be built, but now they can be built according to the new court ruling. Um, so this is just a technical revision and will not change the um, position of the letter we voted in August, so we just approve it. And um, the cost of uh, the cost to make that changes will be covered um, by the co applicants, not by CB3. Um, and on 70 Mulberry Street, um, the first round of engagement meetings um, has uh, finished. Um, the detailed information of the second round engagement will be released in the next few days. As you heard um, from um, the elected officers who spoke before me for the second round, um, there will be a town hall on November 9th and a workshop on November 10th, and there will also be paper surveys. Um, and um, this month, we also did the first uh, NICA subcommittee meeting since February. Um, it was a pretty well attended uh, meeting. I think we had over um, 20 participants. Um, the NYCHA staff um, came to update us on the uh, recovery and resilience constructions and answer questions on COVID responses and other management issues. So um, the recovery and um, resilience construction at Smith House and LaGuardia are all substantially complete, but um, Baru House and Jacob Reese would have a major delay. I think that delay would be more than one year. Um, we are basically looking at the end of uh, 2022 to finish them. Um, the subcommittee members and general public um, also brought up questions such as a service interruption during construction, um, lack of outreach, um, rodent and garbage pickup issue. Um, and the NYCHA staff agreed to have a separate meeting um, with uh, the attendees, some of the attendees who are also um, NYCHA tenants representative. And also during the meeting, there was a suggestion for CB3 to create a town hall type of platform for NYCHA uh, residents to um, raise all their problems and for NYCHA to uh, listen and provide answers. Um, and that's all I have. I see well as I can. You have a question from Valentina, Jackie. Hi Val. 
Jackie, I thought I heard you say, did you say that the Two Bridges lawsuit went through and they can now build there? No, well, this is a, a remember um, last month, um, there was a court ruling that uh, uh, the council and borough president's office, they filed a lawsuit against the city on, on the, the uh, bridges and then they lost that lawsuit. So now um, DCP is asking um, the two bridges co-applicants to uh, make a technical um, changes to the, um, to the, the application we submitted. So, so DCP is asking, I DCP is asking for some changes, but the other two lawsuits, because there was two community groups that had lawsuits. You are correct. You are they, correct. They made it a point to say that there was an injunction that they couldn't build. You are correct. So they are just asking us to make the changes, right? The technical changes right now, but you are correct. The other, lawsuit, the other two lawsuits are still pending. All right. And so they're asking the community board to make changes. Okay. Right. I see hands. I see Carlin and then Damaris. Go ahead, Carlin. Carlin? Hello, Carlin. can everyone hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Jackie mentioned the uh, paper surveys. Who's that going to be sent out to? So, like people or the community at large? Um, I think um, you would be able to, to um, get the paper survey. You can also copy it yourself. Um, so the paper survey would be sent to um, all the people who attended the, uh, the meetings, those um, engagement meetings, and you can share with anyone you, you, you have contact to. So you will have uh, a, I, mm -hmm. I have a follow up. There were a lot of community members left that couldn't get into those community, the, the first round of meetings. Uh, it was a capacity limit or something. I mean, I, I got into one that was, you know, it was broken into a chat room of eight people, but there were a lot of people complaining that they, they were locked out of these meetings. I think um, there was a, a, a deadline issue for that, the registration deadline. Certain people were not able to um, register before the deadline. And, and because of that, that's why um, the, the advisory committee and also the consultant um, opened up a town hall meeting. So everyone will have another chance. If you missed the first round, there will be another chance for you to um, to express your concerns or opinions on 70 Marbury. And the reason they had that registration is because they had to plan for um, language assistance and everything. Okay, Carlin, does that answer your question? Yeah, um, sorry, I guess it does, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just concerned that many people can, uh, can't participate in these meetings. That, and they want to. Uh, well, the, so the, the town hall would be um, November 9, and, um, and the, there would be another workshop on November 10. So the, this information, detailed information would be released on the next few days. And I remember the town hall does not have cap. So anyone who um, wants to attend would have a chance to attend and, and speak their minds. Okay, um, we're gonna move on to Damaris. I, I just um, wanna make, a, I believe a, a, a clarifying point uh, regarding the two bridges area. So there's three lawsuits. One lawsuit was overturned in order for them to move forward. The other two lawsuits have to be overturned. So they still can't do anything as of yet. And DCP is asking us for a uh, worst case scenario, but that is for the waterfront rezoning application. That is not for the lawsuit. Thank you, Demaris. Thank you. Okay, Jackie. He physically has his hand up. Who is that? Ronnie. Oh, okay, go ahead, Ronnie. <laughs> I just want to ask a question about uh, 
uh, Grandview Gills okay. about the two buildings. Um, okay. They had an agreement with them, but I didn't hear nothing about jobs. Did we work on any about hiring people from the community? Um, so during the public uh, session, um, we didn't hear that. And um, Grand Street UTA um, has reached some agreements with um, with the the, uh, the developers. So right, and, right. Um, So did you did you send anyone to attend the meeting and voice that concern? No, I didn't. Okay, so. Um, and I guess that's the reason we didn't have that. I mean, I wish you have uh, you had attended that meeting so we could in include that point. What are you really saying? It's too late now? Um, no. no, you still oh, okay. can. Yeah, if you want to um, propose any changes, you still can. But you need to, it would be great if you have some languages. I know the language that I have, but just my job. You got to put I that just put that in some kind of way to hire people from the community. I mean, that should be automatic, I think. You know, we should ask for that. Yeah, I mean, um, so do you, do we want to work on the language right now? I can do the motion if you want. I can write that in language if it's helpful. Yeah, it'd be very helpful. So, uh, Olympia, I move to add in the resolution, we recommend that the developer commits to hire people from the district um, or to, to give uh, priority to hiring people from the district if they apply for the jobs that right. are available. Sounds good? Yeah. Michelle, were you able to capture that? No, um, Olympia, could you email me that, yes. please? Yeah, Thank I can you. put it in the chat. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, yeah, email? that's fine. Email is okay. better if you don't mind. Uh, I use an iPad. Um, I'd just like to say whether we should also include something about working with the Lower East Side Employment Network. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm working on the language as we speak, and I, I, we recommend that the developer uh, uh, co uh, commits to giving priority to um, any local applicants for openings of jobs. You know, and uh, uh, and that collaborates with the Lower East Side. What are they called? Em employment okay. Network. Lower East Side Employment Network. Maybe coordinate rather than collaborate. Okay. And where are we going to add that in at? Um, the third it can be bullet. the third point. Yeah, the third bullet. Sorry, Anissa, was it Lower East Side Network? Lower East Side Employment Network. L-E-S-E-N, lesson. Oh, Vision Urbana. They have a network, workforce network also. It's the same one, Rodney. Okay. We work together. Just making sure. So now my motion should be seconded, but I'm going to read it one more time. We recommend that the developer commits to giving priority uh, to local applicants for uh, job openings uh, and to coordinate with the Lower East Side Employment Network. That's fine. Yes, that's, that's good. And Trevor? Well, I. If the, I think we need to talk if there's any discussion about the particular motion. I saw Demiris wanted to speak and I don't, I'm just asking Demiris, is that language, uh, sorry to put you on the spot, but I know we've done this before with other particular development. I I'm mean, just trying, just trying to think, are we being consistent with our language and whether it's enforceable or not? Um, I mean, it's, it's, Nothing, you know, is enforceable without a contract, right? But that's the first thing. The second thing would be, so yeah, I mean, it's a good point to raise. Um, we have recommended in previous resolutions that developers work with the Lower East, Side, Lower East Side Employment Network. So that's in line, I think, with previous positions. Uh, 
I don't, I think that, you know, we can say that we want to um, make sure that the developers hire locally, um, that, that they make, they give a priority to hiring locally, uh, which is a little different than any applicant, because I think, you know, you can't just hire any applicant. It has to be qualified applicants, obviously, but, and then the last point I just want to make is that I, I believe that this is part of what the, the guild had asked for previously, but the developer landlord did not want to memorialize any agreement. So that was part of the argument. So, but if the board is willing to do it, I'm not gonna be the person to say no. I'm gonna say, heck yeah, let's hire locally and use the employment network, you know, and coordinate with them. So, I mean, just, you know, somebody fine tune the language and I think we're fine. I mean, I don't really have any objections. So Demaris, I added the qualified and I put it in the chat. It now so reads. We agree to hire to to hire, you know, to make to give priority in hiring locally and working with the Lower East Side Employment Network. I think that's fine. I think the current language is fine. We should um, get this done and move forward because um, we still have other um, items on tonight's agenda, and I think that would capture what um, uh, Ronnie um, suggested. So, so um, David, do we need any? Um, uh, there, yeah. It, it, are there any other motions that have to be made? Ask I think for, so. Ask for objections. Yeah. Roll roll call vote or what are we doing? What if, is this an amendment? It is a need to that say. It, it, yeah. So ask if there are no objections because if there are not, that is the vote. Okay. If there are objections, then there, then there should be some discussion. There still might not have to be a vote because after discussion, you might be able to ask again, okay, so are there no objections? Okay. But really the only time we need to vote on an amendment is if someone really forces us to have a vote okay. by objecting and saying, I want it counted, okay? All right. I'm Go okay ahead. with it. Go ahead, um, Jackie. Go ahead, ask the question. Does anyone yeah. object oh, Jackie, um, this? Does anyone object this amendment? Hearing no. Let me see. I see no hands. Okay, I don't see any hands. Thank you, David. Okay. Oh, that's it, Jackie. No hands. And that's it, right? That's. That's all for your report? Right. Okay, good. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, transportation? Uh, we just had the rebel presentation, no resolutions. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. All right, so now, as promised, <laughs> we're going to now move into our expense priorities and also to our district needs statement. Now, let me just say this. You know, the community board is required to um, give input on budget priorities for our community every year. We have to do this. Each committee makes a list of the needs based on research and consultations, and then they rank it in the order that it's supposed to, that they like to have it within their committee. Um, we appreciate the hard work that each committee has done and respect the ranking within each committee. If it is, if you know, it is possible, you can move the items down or up. Um, but we ask that you keep them within the committee's ranking. Okay, Trevor, I said that earlier, but I want to make sure everyone understands that. Um, so we can submit 25 expense items and 40 capital items. After the committee submitted their list, the exec collated them. So at the executive meeting this week, we went over them and put them in a different and kind of compressed them a little bit more. Okay. So if everyone got an opportunity to read this, right, everyone got an opportunity to read this before tonight, then perhaps, okay, thank you, Linda. Who put that up? Michael or Linda, thank you so much. Um, you'll see that in the front of each one, there's a letter or a number before each item and it shows 
its committee ranking. So you would you so we would not lose it. Okay, so it, like you see HS, that is Health and Human Services, and P Parks. Okay, at the beginning, if you can see it there, pull it down a little bit more so they can see the other. Okay, so you see, and then land use is LU. Go on down a little more. You see P is parks and they all see P1. That means the parks rank that as their number one thing. Okay. And E economic development that they rank that item as their number one thing. P3 that's parks number three item four item like that. T's transportation. That's their ranking and that's their number one. Okay. So everyone is clear about that. I think that's the list, right? Okay. On and on. I have a question. Can I ask a question? Sure. Go ahead, Demers. I thought we were, so there's, a, I saw like 12 human services priorities. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. Yep. And parks had a few, um, but like I said, we can, we can submit 25 expense items and 40 capital items, okay? Um, so anyway, if you want, we can start with the district needs statement or we can start with the budget priorities. It's up to you guys, which one you wanna start with. What, which one would you suggest we start with? And then we can, I don't, I mean, do we need to read each one? I don't think we do. If you've read them already, I don't think we need to read each one. Just like the district needs statement. If you got the, everyone should have a copy of the district needs statement. And you saw that Susan sent out an attachment that is a version of the district needs and proposed clarifications. So these were just changes. I do and have that. You want to show it? I'm sorry. You got that, Linda? Okay. And so. To. Up to you. Okay. Yep, Linda, go ahead and show that other one. That's the attachment that Susan sent out. Mm. And it's like uh, the pages are there for arts and cultural. You see page four, page five. These are things that were further clarified. And then we don't have to review all 30 pages tonight. So that way we can just go over the ones. You want to look at the changes? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Okay, there's one. Susan may be able to explain some of these better than we can. So if, and if, if everyone had an opportunity to read this, right? If you don't have any objections, then we could just... Can we clarify what we're talking about? Yes. Now what's on the screen is that's uh, what that's what I'm trying to do. Linda is looking to look for the amendment. So I'm asking you guys, which would you like to go over first? The budget priorities, the expense priorities, or you want to go over the district need statement? Which would you like to go over first? Alicia, you've got a hand up from Michelle. Okay, go ahead, Michelle. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure I'm working off the right version because I got a lot of emails about this. Um, have the budget priorities changed since the executive meeting? Because I sent back a word version of that, but I didn't get one back. No. Yes, yes. Yeah. So this afternoon, um, after the exec, one member um, asked some questions and there was a few clarifications. You should have gotten an email today that listed seven pages with track changes. And is that district needs and? Just the district budget? needs state. Just the district right. needs Right, okay, state. so I have the email you sent at noon, but I don't have an updated budget. Um, so the budget, budget priorities. priorities have not changed. They okay, okay. are so exactly the same. Last week. All right, thank you. David Adams has his hand up. Go ahead, David. Yeah, um, I have no problems. I just, Susan, you're very good at this. I'm going to ask you, did you correlate with what the city might do anyway with our budget needs? And maybe um, since they're doing something else that we can cover out what we need and change our priorities around, did you usually analyze it like that? Uh, it's exact. I, what I think you're asking is, um, yes. Yeah, so the each committee chair, as well as Jim and I, 
um, attended consultations with each agency. And yes, we did find out what was already um, funded, which wasn't very much, and what was uh, what needed funding. Is, is that okay. what you're asking? Yeah, basically, if you, if you knew what they were going to do anyway, so you wouldn't yes. have to waste a high number on something which may be important, but they're doing it anyway. That's exactly, that was exactly um, what we tried to do. For instance, we found out that they are not looking at cutting any senior centers. So therefore you will not see that on the list. Okay, thank you. I just. Larissa has her hand up. I see Larissa's hand. I was going to suggest that we start with the, um, the budget priorities since we don't have to do a lot of editing. Okay. This, we can ordering. Okay. Uh, might be something easy we can get taken care of before moving on to things that might um, require more um, discussion. Okay. All right. So everyone, um, did everyone get an opportunity to read the expense priorities? I know that at exec, we, we went over it quite a bit and we kind of moved things around a little bit. So um, if there are no objections to this, to the budget priorities, then we can move on. So everyone look it over, or did you look it over? It just, are we just talking about the expense, or are we talking about expense yes. and capital? No. Yes. yes, which? Expense and capital. No. At the end? Just no, expenses. just the expenses, okay. So just the expenses, Lisa. Lisa, Thank you. you okay, hold on a second. Hand, whose hand is that? David uh, Adams. David. David, your hand is. Back. I lowered my hand. It's not my hand. Okay. If it is, I'll take it down again. There, there are no hands. Right? David, it's not up there anymore. Michael, his hand is uh, not. Up. Sorry, it's showing up for me for some reason. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, so it's just the priorities, Lisa. It's expense priorities. Expense have capital priorities also. Yes, capital priorities, but I believe that. I think they're down the end here. At yeah. the end, that's on the next set. Yeah. So probably we should consider the so two. Let's do, let's do the first one. Let's do the budget priorities, expense priorities. You got okay. it. So everyone look at that. There's no, there's no objections. If there's no objections, then we can go ahead and move on. Yeah. No hands for this. No hands. No hands. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the capital priorities. Thank you, Linda. Okay. You going to get the priorities? Any objections? Are there any objections to this? Uh, I don't see any yeah. hands. Uh, Herman, that was that you? Herman, you said something? No, okay. So, so we have no, I'm sorry, no hands? No hands yet. No hands. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the district needs statement. All righty. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Go ahead and put district needs up there and put the, that first sheet that Susan sent out with just the um, markup, the red track changes. The priorities. Yeah, that's what's here now. And okay. I, I moved it to the first red mark. Okay. Thank you. So the first one is arts and cultural page four. Um, Alicia, you've got point of uh, order. Val's hand up. Okay. And Herman busted Sorry, in a point of point uh, something. Just what are we looking at now that has like number number thirteen, new school for Essex Crossing? What is this? This is the capital. Yeah. That was Linda's the capital got the wrong document up. That was, that was capital priorities, and now we move forward. Now we're going on. If there were no objections to that, we're moving on. All right, so this is capital priorities that we're looking at now. No, we're beyond that now. So what what are we looking Linda, at? Now? Linda has on this. Linda, did you put up the um, red marks the tracks? Yes. No, I, 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 
district needs now, state district. Now we're on to district needs statement. That All is right. not what we are seeing. Okay. My, my question is, I'm looking at number 13, really? new school for Essex Crossing. Let me my question back. is, Let me what am I looking at? at this third? Oh, right. now I'm not looking at nothing. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to reshare it. For some reason, it didn't show that I changed the document. Thank you. So I'm just saying, what was that document that 13 was Essex? That was the that was the fiscal year capital priorities. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Are you seeing district needs now? We're no. not seeing anything, Linda. We're not seeing okay. it yet, Linda. Now, uh, that's that's that? that, that's the budget no. priorities. Yeah. One more time. Okay, now. There we go. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Okay, so mm, the first one is the first markup and change is on page four, the arts and cultural section, page four. There was, it says here, your email that you sent out, version of the district needs was proposed. It's not showing any change. It's not showing any changes on page four and five. Hold on. Let's go to page four and five. Linda, can you get to page four and five? This is page Lin four right now. Linda, you need to change, you need to go into your track changes and have it show the edits. You, you have it you have it set to simple markup. You need it, you need you need it to show go into review. Review. Go review. see where it says simple markup to your right? Yep. Change that to show all. Just pull, no, pull down, yeah, pull down the menu. All markup. All markup. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, thank you. Okay. So everyone sees the red. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could we expand the font to one bump or two? The font? <laughs> With the size of the document control plus or something. Not the font, but the size of the display. It's a, I believe it's under view, zoom, increase. Hey guys, you guys. Sliding bar on the bottom. You, menu. you guys are making my life hellish. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, right, Linda. If it's any consolation, I ordered a new computer while we were in this meeting. Good. <laughs> That's going to be a little big. Yeah, that's going yeah. to be. Okay. Actually, oh, there you go. Thank you. Wow. OK. That make you happy? I think yes. the next change was on page five. Right. So look, everyone looked at four. Now look at page five, Linda. Yes, ma'am. That was four. Here OK, is this is five. five. Right there. And therefore. Okay. Any um, no objections to this? Was, was that the full ask? I mean, I know that that our resolution asked the mayor to. Is this just just foolishness to acquire the building as he promised? This is just showing the needs for the community. Okay. I'll go for it. Any other? Anybody else want to say something about that? Or yeah. Anything? Please, anyone, any any hands for this section right here? This is for arts and cultural. Okay. Okay, let's go down to Health and Human Services, page six. Well, page five, we had a little small change. Oh, page five, there was another technical? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, that one, I don't think anybody would quarrel with that one. Just a clarification. Okay, where is that at? That's Wi-Fi internet under the last okay. one on page five. Okay. Thank you. Now we're going to go to Health and Human Services. Page six. What okay, is right there. That? Cafe. What is that? Jim. Really? Is that a term of art? It is. Maybe the 
O between the L and the B should be A, but it's a cafe, uh, cafe it's gym uh, laboratory, cafe gym laboratorium. It's That's everything. All those things ought to be separately provided. That's not, by the way, that's not a change. That underline is there because uh, the program that line, sees that as a spelling okay. mistake. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, but you should change it to the lab O instead of, it should be L-A-B instead of L-O-B. You want me to make, <laughs> actually make this? L-A-B-O. Yes, if you would, L-A-B-O, Labotorium. It's an industry term. <laughs> Laboratorium. It's uh, all of these separate things should be provided separately for the children, and that's not been happening. They get this one room, maybe, one that all the purposes. purposes. Yep. Well, then, okay, okay, next. Now, this one here working families and most. Okay. Um, all in agreement with this. Okay. Moving on. Moving yep. on. Page seven. I think that was it right there on page page seven, Linda. At so the those, top. Yeah. It was all the that one, that one little. Yeah, that could also. Could also. Okay. That was it. Okay. Uh huh. All right. Page ten. Oh, moving right along. Yeah, all right. Read fast, everybody. Ooh. <laughs> okay, here it is. Okay. Yeah. Providers are. Okay, and 58 beds. Okay. We okay with this? It's just a fact. Uh huh. Okay, no hands. Keep going, Linda. We're going to go now to park section, page 14. Another interesting spelling there. Okay. Okay, page 14. Okay, page 14. SDR Park. Whew. Okay, are we good with this? I don't see any hands, Alicia. I think you're good. Thank you, Michael. Okay, go to page 16, Linda. How about this? Oh, slated. Okay, space is slated for temporary use. So far, house. Okay. Yes? Yep. No hands. Okay, good. Keep going. Page 16. Okay. Okay, right here by the boathouse. Just and adding the compost yard. The compost yard oh, needed to continue. And we got the library, Ottendoffer. That's just a spelling. That's just, a, yep, spelling, spelling. Spell check is going crazy. I think that's it, guys. I think that's it. Down to the very end. To the end of the road. Any more? Okay. Are there any okay. objections to the corrections or fourth? And then we can vote on the whole document, all three documents. Herman, you unmuted yourself. Do you have a, a question? When you get to 19. Page 19. Okay, that's it. That's the one. Uh, preserve the viability of HDFCs. Uh, Where's that? Where do you see that at, Herman? 19, page 19. HDFCs. Now, this is page that 19. is page 19. 
you, you had yeah, it. It's at the, the very top. first paragraph. It's at the top. Oh, go up. Go up, Linda. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't see it at the top. I still don't see it at the top. It's in the it's paragraph. No, no, it's there. It's it does there. not have a heading. It is oh, right there. Expand there. support. Okay. It's yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh-huh. What did you need to say, Herman? Herman, you're frozen. I think he wants to ask for faster Wi-Fi. Herman. Herman. Maybe you can put it in the chat, Herman. What did you uh, please? Because tell us what you want us to say here. Herman, can someone text Herman? Well, he said something like uh, preserving the viability of HS HDFC. I believe that's what he said. Okay. That is not what this paragraph concerns. So maybe he thinks it's a good place to add a section about that. You do have to hear from him unless unless someone else knows what what wording that he would like there i'm so sorry i'm not hdfc you. in the document i'm not, I'm you not might familiar find with another mention. i just know a little bit about them i don't know enough to correct what herman wants to say herman can you get a, can you call us let us somebody know um, there he is he's oh, still frozen herman can you search for hdfc please and let's see if this is the only mention in the document. Yes, yeah, somebody keeps muting me. No, we didn't mute you. I didn't mute you. Linda, are you muting her? Are you hearing me now? I, I, yeah, I we hear you. Hear me. You, you, muted you were frozen. So uh, I, I'm listening to four. Yeah, he's uh, he's fro there. You are. You're not muted, Herman. Okay, HDFCs. <laughs> Or many different animals. They all have their restrictions. They're all different. And some of them are not all co ops. They are residential rentals. They are. You want to propose the wording? Herman? I think he's frozen again. He's frozen again. I, I think he, what he's trying to say is that they all, they're multifaceted. So they, it's not just one type of thing that, um, that they're governed by. They don't just all have co-op boards. Yeah, I understand, but he's- Yeah, but I think ahead. guys, what he's trying to suggest is not just to expand support for, resi for our residential resiliency upgrades, but also to support financially HDFCs that are in distress because because they are very different, some of them are in distress. But maybe well, if, if you just want to say that you're asking that the, these buildings that are in distress existed, I manage a lot of those what you call distress co-ops, and it's a hard thing to get HPD to actually work mm -hmm. in it. I also have buildings that the city refused to help and is born into foreclosure. I manage a couple of those. Okay. I manage on the low east side neutral housing different types of HDFCs. Okay, hey, so Herman, could you this suggest is just a resiliency update? It's not altogether true. I'm sorry, can I jump in there and just say please search for the letters HDFC? This is not the section. If you search for the letters HFTC, you'll bring up the section that he's talking about. There is a section on HDFC. Everyone can't talk at the same time, so please. Thank you. It's on page 19. No, it's on page 18. It's up a little bit. That's on page 19. It's the first one that was found. Unless I need to go all the way back. Move up. Move up, Linda. I see HDFC here. Keep, keep oh, okay. Here yellow Maybe highlights. I, I, I was looking at my version. Go backward. There, it appears Stupid. four times in the document. All right, wait a minute here. I'll just go up to the top. Mm. It's 
just difficult, David. It gets overwritten. On that page, it's given to preserve affordable housing, and then it all CFTs. All right, page 18. Yeah, I think, I think itself misleads everything and should be struck from it at this point. I'm sorry, screwed up. Okay, must you must. Okay. What do you want to do you here? You click in the document now, and then you can X out of the navigation thing. I said uh, I would like it page. to be eliminated. Based on my experience, it doesn't make sense. I work with HDFC. I even live in one. <laughs> so you want to uh, wait, wait, wait. I wait. live in one too, Herman, and I don't see why we would take that out. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're very clear about what we're Herman. saying. Here. Linda, would you close the navigation bar? Yes. Alicia, yes. if I may. Right up to the top. Okay. Thank you. I don't know. So what are we saying here, Herman? Do you want us to take out the, all the HFDCs? What, what is it that you're suggesting? We, we, we need, Lisa, I'm trying to understand what Herman is saying and he's frozen. Lisa. Yeah, and I, uh, I thought he was saying, take out this paragraph to preserve the viability of HDFC buildings because he didn't agree with it. And I think it's perfectly fine and I wouldn't want to uh, uh, take it out. He's saying that he works with some HDFCs and this doesn't refer to them, but it doesn't say all. It just uh, has, re has resulted in many HDFCs being converted to market rate housing or being lost to foreclosure. Doesn't say all. Right. Um, but, but those are issues that affect many HDFCs and I don't think we should change this paragraph. And it, and it basically, and I like what it says in the beginning, increasing the operating cost. Mm -hmm. Alicia, there's, a, there's at least four hands raised. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see the hands. Let me look at the hands. Whose hands are up? First is David Crane. Okay, David, go ahead. Never mind. Uh, never mind. Okay. I, I was Lisa, trying to get your attention earlier to it. Lisa had her hand up. Lisa, did you say what you wanted to say? I wanted to say what that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jackie and then Damaris. Go ahead, Jackie. Thank, thank you. So this paragraph um, was discussed at the committee meeting already. Yeah. And I agree with Lisa that this paragraph um, needs to be preserved. In fact, it, it does have some um, does have a lot of um, actual um, need for the um, HDFC buildings. However, uh, listen to what Herman just said, HDFC does have multiple types. Some types are co-ops ownership, some type are rental. So if um, if Herman comes back, um, I, I feel like if he wants to be more specific, we can um, use and, the word yeah. uh, limited equity HDFC buildings. That would uh, make it different from HDFC rental if that is, um, uh, if Herman will agree to it. Um, but I think in general, the, the, the paragraphs need to be preserved. And also um, I actually don't see that much problem with the language. The only thing um, I feel like it can be more specific is just to say limited equity HDFC instead of just regular HDFC. Yes, Thank right you. Here, Jackie. All HDFCs are limited equity. That's yeah. the, in the definition. Right, but the, so some of them are not ownership. When we when we debated this um, item, I think- Co-ops and some are rentals, but right. they're, they're all limited. Maybe we can use the word. I mean, it depends how Herman wants to phrase it. But in terms of languages, I don't see this paragraph have, has problem. Damaris, you had your hand up. I'm sorry. And rentals are affected. I'm sorry. Please, uh, one person at a time. Damaris? I, I was just saying, Lisa and um, Jackie weren't done yet. Um, I just, before I, I ask my question or pose my or make my statement i just want to make sure they were done are you are you two done jackie and lisa 
You're on mute, Lisa. I wanted to, sorry, I wanted to clarify that the, these issues of increasing operating costs, uh, lack of affordable options and gentrification affected both co-ops and rental HDFCs. Right here, Lisa. Okay. If, if, uh, if, it, if we agree. Should we put it right there? Lisa, do you see where um, Linda has the asterisk? It doesn't actually look like the right place. Mini cooperatives and rental. Right there, Lisa. Mm -hmm. I think Lisa is frozen, guys. Lisa, you're frozen. It's a bad time to be frozen. It doesn't add anything. Doesn't oh, add. we're getting towards it. Lisa, did you hear us? Yes, uh, but I think what she's saying is she didn't suggest an amendment. She was just responding to Jackie. So I think the language is good to go, right? Lisa, give yes. us thumbs up. Yes. Okay. Now, Damaris, please. Um, I just wanted to, um, I, don't, I don't have a, a comment about this section. Um, I, I had a comment about the public housing in section eight section. If we could go if we're ready to, Linda, yeah. can you go back up to public housing. What page was that? It's, I, I think it's actually below. Below this one? I think so, yeah. There it is. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So the only thing I wanted to just say, ask here, and is if you know if we would if we want to add anything about uh, NYCHA's new um, preservation trust proposal and the blueprint for change. So we talk about community participation in NYCHA, Next Gen, and RAD, but. The housing authority is already now proposing an entirely new program, next gen, uh, rad, and play, and things like infill could be a part of that, but it is a different program. <clears throat> so, I if we were to add something, what I would like to add is where we since we're talking about community participation, <clears throat> that we, I, I think the last sentence there must be increased community engagement and transparency from NYCHA regarding these new programs. I just think we need to make a reference somewhere in this paragraph that it's not just next gen or pact, which is rad, but that if uh, the blueprint for change um, proposal and the NYCHA, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm losing my words right now. I'm, I'm so tired. Um, the Blueprint for Change and NYCHA's Preservation Trust uh, Initiative. In those two processes, there must be community, increased community engagement. That is a big issue right now. So a lot of resident associations and residents across the city are very concerned that this new initiative that is being proposed by the housing authority is happening during a time when many residents can't participate because not every, all public housing residents have access to the internet or devices that get them onto the internet. So this is a, a major issue and people are writing letters. So I'm, I just think we should be in line, in line with that as well. How about right at the end of both programs here, we say as well as, and mention those, those other programs that you, that you spoke of. I think that's fine. I just think it needs to be mentioned. So give me yeah. some words here, as well as when you could the for change. Things have change. been discussed. Well, it's not just for this, for CD3, it's like city wide, but I guess if you feel like you can put it there, let's see. Well, uh, size we're point. talking about CD3, so. I know, I know, but it's not, a, it's not. See, no, I don't think it does go in that section because here it talks about several developments in CD3. This is an overall program. So maybe it goes to NYCHA 2.0 programs, um, including NYCHA Next Gen, infill permanent affordability, as well as, um, wait, the, wait, together pack the local iteration of federal rental assistance program, as well as, uh, 
NYCHA's blueprint, as well as the blueprint for change and the preservation uh, trust. And I'll get you, I can probably get, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I think that's where I would put it. That's it, that's all. Get with me here, so you make sure I get it right. Blueprint for change and? The, do the blueprints for change, this proposal to create a preservation trust. Yes? I think that's fine. It's, yeah. Our new models for public housing I introduced the private sector into NYCHA properties. Mm -hmm. That's where it, it doesn't, well, it can, it can. That, so maybe that would be the next change. Our new models for public housing that may introduce the private sector into NYCHA properties. And I think if you add that, that'd be fine. You got it. I guess we should Thank ask you. if anyone has a problem with this change. Anyone has a problem with this change? Let's see hands, any hands? No hands. No hands, okay. All right. Are there any more? I, I think, it, are there any other suggestions, everyone? Look it over, look it over. No more cha changes in here, right? Okay, if there are no more changes, then we will vote. Yeah, that's where we're at now. All right. Ready? That oh, looks good. Okay, Eric, you said something? No, I was asking if we're ready. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm ready. Is everyone ready? Ready. <laughs> I think we're ready. Oh, I'm ready too. Right. Okay, let's go, Eric. Okay, David Adams. Yes. Yaron Altman. Yes. Jesse Beck. Jesse. Uh, Dominic Berg. Yes. Okay. Lee Berman. Yes. Carlin Chan. Yes. Jonathan Chu. Jonathan? Okay, David Crane. Yes. Felicia Cruikshank. Felicia? Okay. She's not on. She's not on. No, okay. Jesse and Jonathan are both on. I don't know if they if they're having trouble unmuting, but they are still both on. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Eric Diaz, I vote yes. Alistair Economakis. Al Alistair? Okay. Sure. He's, he's, he's on, so I don't know what why he's not voting. Make sure to unmute unmute guys. Shirley Fennessy. She's not here tonight. Ryan Ryan Gilliam. Yes. Deborah Glass. Yes. Andrea Gordillo. Yes. This guy. Herman Hewitt. Herman? Sorry, this is Jesse. I meant to say yes. I had a little trouble there. Got you, Jesse. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Okay, I see you, Jonathan. You said yes. All right. Okay, Herman Hewitt. No. Move on. Trevor Holland. No more. No, I mean, yes. Yes, sorry. Okay. Linda Jones. Yes. Valentina Jones. Okay. Uh, I abstain on expense priorities and yes to everything else. Tatiana Jorio, Lisa Kaplan. Ta Tatiana? She's not here tonight. Oh, oh, I thought I heard it. Okay. Lisa Kaplan? Yes. Okay. 
Olympia Kazi. Yes. Joseph Kearns. Yes. Okay. Michelle uh, so, Smith. So, 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 so sorry, it, it's Alistair Konamakis. I'm here. I, I just stepped away for a second. Oh, okay. Got you, Alistair. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Michelle Cooper Smith. Where did Michelle go? Michelle? I see She's Michelle. still on. Yes. Got it. Got Eric, you. did you see Herman's vote in the chat? I did not. It's there. He said yes. Oh, I see it. Thank and Jonathan Chu also said yes. Yep, I got him. Good. May Lee. Uh, yes. Okay. Wendy Lee. Wendy? Alicia Lewis Coleman. Yes. Yes. Oh, Wendy, that was you? Okay. Got you, Wendy. David Louie. Yes. Okay. Hello. Oh, sorry. Yes. I got you, Wendy. Okay, David. I got you. Ellen Lou. Yes. Thank you. Michael Marino. Yes. Great. Alexandra Militano. Yes. Got you. Michael Perlis. Yes. Tariq Ramos. Yes. Got you, Tariq. Paul Rangel. Yes. All right. Carolyn Ratcliffe. Yes. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay. Damaris Reyes. Yes. Right. Richard Ropiak. Yes. Gotcha. Tomas Rosa. Thomas. Mute, Thomas. Yes, thank you. Got you. Thank you. Thanks, Damaris. Robin Chattel. Yes. All right. Heidi Schmidt. Yes. All right. Larissa Scheinberg. Yes. Clint Smeltzer. <clears throat> Clint? Clint Smeltzer? Yes, yes. Sorry, my space bar wasn't working, but yes, I'm yes. <laughs> Got you. Anisha Stephen. Yes. All right. Sandra Strother. Sandra? She's not on. She Josephine. On. Okay. Josephine Velez. Yes. Yeah. Got you. Troy Velez. Yes. All right. Rodney Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Kathleen Webster. Yep. All right. Jackie Wong. Yes. Okay. And Ricky Wong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Community Board 3 we just did our district needs statement. Congratulations. <laughs> Can we adjourn now? Uh <laughs> well, we haven't we have no old business. All right, I make a motion to adjourn. And we have <laughs> and we have no new business. Okay, Val. Mo uh -huh. Anyone second? I just want second. to I just want to say uh next year in uh Washington. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Woo -woo. We'll vote everybody. I already voted. Rock on. All right. Have a good one. All right. Have a good night, night everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Be, night. Safe. Be safe. Good night. Good night. Feel better, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you. Eric, there's a vote in the chat if you didn't see it. Hey, oh, sorry. Wrong. I thought we were just voting on uh, the, the, the priorities. I first. got it. You're on. I got it. Thank, Thank you, guys. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Baby looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.